So I, yeah, that's, I guess what you get so far. All right, let's see here. Is audio working now? Sorry, we had a um, a bug with our volume. Perfect, it's working now. Sorry about that. Gotta love technical problems. Technical difficulties. So, next, Ong. So you see a huge individual roughly probably around eight foot tall uh in full scale mail armor uh huge the only thing signifying his race is as a goliath is his entire right arm is completely barren no armor or anything on it and in his left arm you see a big old f off claymore just carrying in it, and he just points to his chest, and it says, Hello, my name is Ong. <clears throat> okay. And other than that, you don't see anything else. Okay. Last, but certainly not least, is the Deco. Or Zydeco. Zydeco. Zydeco, okay, cool. <laughs> Zydeco is... Extremely small and scrawny for a tabaxi, having initially had a very rough start to his life with a heart condition, the result of which um, required that his family travel to the dwarves to see if something could be done. And something was done, magically done, to his body, and he received a new heart. The only issue with that was is that... In the process, his family had to leave him behind due to the amount of care was that was required, and it's left him frailer than usual, but with an instinct for wanting freedom beyond just the order of the dwarves. Um, when you look at him, essentially he's wearing black mage robes. <laughs> it's hard to see much beyond a large brim hat and a uh, robe that covers most of his face with gold eyes peeking out. All right. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Love the characters, by the way. So, <clears throat> you guys are, are up in this area in the front of the dais, and the man who is speaking, Aranvius, approaches and looks at you armor gleaming in the tundra light. Then, big old gleaming smile on his face. So, you're the lucky ones who've been assigned to my squad. We have a very special and uh, important task for us to undertake. The main army is going to be a diversion. They're going to attack and keep busy the main demonic hordes. And for us, well, we have the pleasure of infiltrating a dungeon underneath the main, the main capital of Naupau. In this dungeon here, there are many demons and undead that are rumored to be infested at the moment. They said there's a rift down there that they've been pouring out of, killing and slaughtering civilians in the inside of the city. This is not acceptable. We have to get in there, and we have some ma four magical artifacts that we are going to put out. And we're going to place in the four centralmost cardinal directions down there that we can. Now, these are artifacts of, of the god Agma. And they will help purify and create a hallowed ground where the demons cannot enter and keep the city of Naupau safe from the demonic clutches. For this, as this will be a difficult endeavor, I will be leading this with you and going with you as well. And, with part of this, 
You'll all be given a ration of potions to help keep you alive in there. As, well, life is not assured down there. You never know what you're going to face when you meet the abyssal wretches that come out. So. This is your last moment to back out if you're not willing to do this, but I would not ask anything of you that I would not be willing to do myself. Can I count on you? Ung pokes his chest. A.A. Run pokes Ung's chest as well. I mean, I've come this far. Step away. I don't really got anywhere else to go, so sure, I'll come along. I'm sick of fishing anyway. I mean, if all else fails, you'd be rich beyond your I'll wildest stop, dreams. Please. Oh, sorry, Ken. Oh, go ahead. And I'll speak up and, and look at the group of people and say, Death is but a part of life. Fear it not, evade it not, and view it not as evil. To fear death is to deliver you into the hands to bring death upon you. May your travels be safe and fare well. Ah, I see we have a Kelumvarite. I'm a disciple of Ogma myself, but it is good to have a fellow clergy member with us. Zydeco, being silent during all of this, will hesitate and slightly clutch at the area of his chest, but let go and nod quietly, but keeps an eye on Duran. In. Okay. Also, before we get too much further, did everyone choose a uncommon magic item to start with your character that wasn't a weapon or armor? Uh huh. Yes. I did. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. I did. Can I didn't I oh. go back in there? So. Yep. You can add something here real quick if you if you like, or you don't have to if it's not with your character. Um, yeah, I can work on it real quick while everybody's doing whatever. So, you each are handed a potion of healing. This is just a standard one. And with this, I will let you guys know I'm of a new rule that I am attempting to uh, run with this. Uh, potions can be drank with either an action or a bonus action now. If you use your full action to drink the potion, the healing is maxed. If you use your bonus action to take it, you have to roll for the the health. High risk, high reward sort of thing. That way it makes drinking the potion more meaningful and your choice of when to do it. But only one potion per turn, by the way. You can't. Just double chug. Man. Yeah, just chug, 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 chug. Nope, we are not in a college. I was going to double... Okay, but I'm a fisherman, so, like, mm. So. <laughs> Aronvius Ar looks at you guys, and he's like, well, follow me then, if you are ready to go. As he turns around and starts walking, he calls back, by the way, uh, the Black Stone actually appointed you to be my, uh, my honor guard, so we'll see how that'll be. We'll take this as your test run. I'm not worried about my safety. You seem all very capable. As am I. You notice he is in gleaming silver plate or plate mail. A glorious shield that radiates magic. Along with a sword at his hip that seems to be iced over and radiating a cold. And he starts leading you away as you hear the battle cry of the main army. As after about half hour of prepping and stuff like that, the main bulk of the army gets taken into the fray. The din and roar of battle becomes overwhelming, even from this far away. You hear screaming and dying, and bestial screams and sounds and snarls that you've never heard before in your life. If you have, only in your deepest, darkest nightmares. 
the fighting, from what you can hear, is intense and brutal, and you, at this point, are grateful that you were selected for this duty. As you guys walk through the back lines of the front lines, you see the wounded coming through. Arms and legs missing, if they're lucky enough to be alive. <laughs> at all. Wounds of terrible rips and tears. Chunks ripped out, acid globs melting bone and flesh alike. You see death and destruction like that you've never seen. You guys keep walking, and with a grim faced determination, Aramvius leads you further and further past the back lines. After a while, you come to what looks to be an old cellar tucked behind the ramparts of a wall. Bending over to lift up the, the cellar door, Arandius looks at you and points to, uh, to Oom. Um. You first, sir. Uh, you seem to be the most inclined to sweeping clear, should we say. Ong steps in and starts going into the cellar. So you drop into this small cellar and it's the smell gets you first. You smell death, decay, and just awfulness. As you look around you see lots and lots of body parts. You see bits and bobs, what looks to be like un of town folk not lucky enough to escape in time. As you, st as you start to see things moving underneath the corpses, the pile of flesh, the gore. As you see these weird, demonic little creatures start to slough from underneath. What do you do? Uh, or is it Oong or Ung? Uh, whatever you want. Um, he doesn't talk, so he doesn't care. Uh, he is immediately going to charge forward and slam his uh, claymore into them. You guys, does not like tiny things. You guys hear the grinding of the claymore coming out against the stone of the building. As you might not have a full bit of room in here to do this. However, this will be initiative for everyone. here one second all right let's see here that all right Osiris oh, What was your initiative? Fifteen. All right, Doran. Twelve. Um. Uh, eleven. Is that a go? A sad three. A Aaron. Eighteen. show you what these things look like. I'm going to post in the Ravenloft channel so you can see what these look like. You see these awful flabby, gray-skinned creatures covered under the gore coming out 
It's going to pull out from the the corpses. They are small, about the size of toddlers running around. As they rush, Ang. Um, the first two are going to rush up to you, Ang. Um, they're hopping little steps, crawling out from underneath the gore. They are going to take a claw attack each upon you. That'll be a 13 to hit you. Miss. And then a 4 will also miss as you... They come up and start clawing and trying to bite at you as you just swat at them with your claymore keeping them back. Next up, Aaron. You are just really up above. Them. You can. Uh, the cellar door is being held open for you. Okay, I'm gonna proceed. <laughs> uh, go on in. I'm gonna attack um, whichever one has taken the most damage. There hasn't been any of them that have taken no any damage, damage yet. yet. Okay, I thought that he did some initial damage. Nope. Okay, well then, whichever one is the closest to me, I don't know. I'm just gonna attack with my trident. Alright, so you drop down, trident in hand. You see many of these things in the room crawling out from the gore. Little toddler size creatures. Oh, it's a 10. A 10 will hit. Okay, I have to make sure which one is regular damage and not. Sorry, because this is um, versatile. I have to make sure which one is yep. melee damage. I think it's the top one. Would that be correct? So versatile is uh, if you two-handed or one-handed. So if you're oh, one, right. If you're one-handing it, it'll be a die six for a trident. Die eight if you're... Right, I'm two-handing it. Yep, so die eight. Okay. All right, seven damage. Seven damage, all right. You squelch through the gut of this one as it just... <laughs> as it's just crawling out and crying out in abyssal gibberish. It's still alive. Anything else that A run? Um. No. Okay. Elzaris. Uh, I am going to cast Thorn Whip. Are you jumping down first? One. Uh, yes. Okay, you drop down into this room. It's about a 20 by 20 room, you notice. Gore everywhere. You cast Thornwhip on the closest one. Um, be the one that Aaron just stabbed. Yeah. That is a 14 to hit. 14 will hit. Or three points of piercing damage. So you come up behind Aaron, you cast your thorn whip, you lash it out, it wraps around this creature as you pull it further onto the trident and it, as it kills it. Anything else? Um, no. Alright. Next up is a group of the mains. One of them is going to rush up to you, Aaron, and attempt to bite you, or claw at you. That'll be an 18 to get you a Aaron. Yep, that's a hit. You take a grand total of five slashing damage from this. Okay. Next up, the next one is going to rush up, and he is going to jump onto Elzaris's back and attempt to claw at him. It'll be an 11 to hit Elzaris. Azaris. I was mute. I was muted. My apologies. Uh, Eleven misses. Luckily. Okay. Next one is going to run up back to Ong, and this one's going to attempt to attack. It'll be a nineteen to hit you, Ong. It's. You'll take a grand total of three points of slashing damage as these little tiny claws rake at your uh, your ankles. Next up, Doran, you are next to respond. Um, as I walk down the stairs, I will pull out my shield and I'll grab my uh, amulet and I'll cast Toll the Dead right. on one of 
uh, one of the one, the one that's on uh, his back, trying to claw on his back. Okay. So the wisdom, wisdom thirteen. And that'll fail. Uh, he has not been injured yet, so it yep. is a D eight. Yeah. Yep. Uh, five points of damage. Five points of damage. All right. Sounds good. Anything else there, my friend? Uh, nope. I'll just have my shield in my hand and. All right. As you do this, two mains try to jump on you from behind as you come around down the staircase. Does an 18 hit? Yes. And then does a 13 hit? Yeah, they both hit. Okay. Uh, you will take a grand total of six points of slashing damage from this. Ong, it is your turn as these things claw at your back. Ong looks at the one that bit his ankle. Did I get a turn? Uh, you are on, on a three. We're currently at number 11 right now. Got it. So, unfortunately, you were in the last part of the initiative. We got five creatures in front of you. But you're getting close. So, Ong. Ung looks down at the one at his feet and you cannot see his face through the visor, but you hear a... <clears throat> and then he stabs down very hardly with his claymore. Okay. <laughs> uh, that is a tw one mod 20 to hit. Yep. For nine points of slashing. As you stab it, you stab it right through the top of the head and it goes all the way through and splits it in twain as that one dies. Anything that else is there? it. All right. That is it. Next up, another main is going to try to jump out at you. They're on. It'll be a 14 to hit. 14 misses. And then another one, an Elzaris, will try to attempt you. That'll be a 21 to hit you, Elzaris. Uh, yes, absolutely. Two points of slashing damage. Ow. Next up, Aranvius calls out, I hear fighting, let me help, as he drops down into the hole. He pulls out his sword and will rush up and attempt to attack one of them. He will hit. And he will do just exactly enough. He goes on one of the ones on Doran, and he will cut it in twain with his sword. Removing that one. Next up, a couple mains jump on Aranvius and attempt to hit him. And both will miss. Zydeco, it is your turn. You are standing alone above in the cellar entryway. The first thing to do is to get down, so Zabdiko will drop down into the hole and look for the closest enemy. Fair enough. The room is crawling with them. Uh, you can see one within uh, about 7 to 10 feet of you. Alrighty, then... He will cast Mind Sliver. Mind Sliver, all right. Intelligence saving throw, if I remember correctly on that one. Yes, of 13. Gets a negative two on the save. Alrighty then. Uh, just a one. One, however, that still does... The bonus, if I remember correctly, with that one. Yep, it casts a subtract a d4 from the next saving throw. It's a very powerful ability still. So, anything else there, Zedico? 
Um, given the closeness of the enemy, Zadigo is going to take the rest of his movement to try to back up a little bit as much as he can from the enemy. Okay. You sort of get in the circle of your allies, sort of that way they're between you and them. It's the safest spot for you to move to. So you sort of put your shoulders to theirs. Perfect. All right. Anything else? No. All right. Next up, two of the mains are going to jump on, try to jump on Aaron. Uh, a 21 should hit you, but a 4 will not. Correct. Uh, you will take 3 points of slashing damage. Okay. Hey, Aaron, it is your turn. Um, how many are currently on me? Just the one? Uh, you have at least two. Okay. As um, you see, there are one, two... Nine left in the room. Okay, I'm gonna go into bonus action rage because okay. I'm just getting pissed. Uh, absolutely, that is a valid course um, of action here. Yeah, I'm gonna um, try to throw the one of them off of me. That's or if it's near my feet, that's cool too, and um, stab it with my trident. Perfect. Twenty-three to hit. 23. That'll definitely hit. 10 damage. As that one skewers it straight to the floor, it twitches a couple times and then stops moving as it starts. It's the ones that you notice have been dying, have been starting to dissolve into a black iger. It's goo. Next up. Or anything else, Aaron? Um, I just had a question because I'm yeah. new to Barbarian. Um, does that add two melee damage it does yes okay then that would be 12 total but okay it it's didn't still, matter i just yep, wanted to make good. sure if yep. if i had to add it or if it added it on okay yep that's are it more math than most other well that's perfect for me so Absolutely. i just wanted to make sure alzaris it is your turn oh what to do uh the one that was slashing at me is dead now, correct? Uh, yes. Okay, then one of the other ones I'm just gonna thorn whip again. Okay. One of the it's ones really that have the been injured, or one do. of the ones that have not? Let's go with one of the ones that's been injured. I don't really want to pull one towards me if it's gonna live. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, that's a 19 to hit. Absolutely. For three points of piercing damage. Three points. As you say, I don't want to pull one that is still living. You almost you wrap your whip around it and you yank this one clean off of Ong as its snarling, slashing teeth and claws come right at you with one life left. Oh, fantastic. We'll get to that one rolling to hit you as it is its turn. Anything else, Azaris, real quick, though? Ah, uh, Nope. All right, does a 13 hit you? 13 matches my AC. All right, so you put your arms up to block, and all of a sudden you just feel the teeth just bury themselves right in your mouth. Or not your mouth, your arms. As you'll take four points of piercing damage on your arm. I am very hurt right now. You, you hear and feel the bone crack under the attack. Uh, one of the mains are going to go after uh, Aranvius, and it is going to miss. Doran, it is your turn. I um, I have one on me currently, right? Uh, you do. You have two of you. Two of them. Actually, no. You have one of them because one of them died. Aranvius killed yeah. one of them. Yeah, I was gonna say somebody killed one of them. Um. I am going to cast uh, Toll the Dead on the one that is on me. The one that's on you, alright. 
wisdom saving throw. That will fail. For seven damage. Seven damage. All right. It is still alive, but the, the ringing in its ears, it clasps its fleshy ears, screaming in pain. Anything else there, Doran? As a bonus action, I'm going to cast Shield of Faith on myself. Perfect. The one that you attacked is going to attempt to slash at you feebly. And it's going to get a four to hit, which will miss. Ong, it is your turn. Um, all right. Is there one still on me? Uh, yes. Cool. Uh, can I grab it and throw it at the one cu uh, clutching its ears? You can, yeah. Okay, I'm going to do that. There'll be an athletics check for that. Followed by an attack roll, if the athletics is good enough. Fifteen for athletics? Yeah, they are small. And then an attack roll, an arm strike, or... An arm strike, yeah. Seventeen to hit. Alright. Roll a die four. And add Ooh, I have to mod. get out a die four. Eight. Eight. All right. So you pick up this one on you. It's snarling, snapping jaws and needle-like uh, claws clawing at your arm as you just pick it up, and you just shh, just football throw it right at the one, uh, clutching its ears that just slashed a Doran as you splatter that one in a greasy skid mark across the floor as the one that you threw climbs back up, still alive. Anything else there, Oong? Nope. Alright. Seeing you do that, uh, two of the mains are going to chitter and they are going to come after you. They're going to run away from you and go after Aranvius. Both will miss here. Do I get op attacks on them? Uh, you get uh, uh, one. Oh, yeah. On one of them, I'm going to swing Greatsword. Yep. Or oh, whatever. Uh, ooh, that's a 11 to hit. 11 will hit. AC is 9 on oh, these guys. Oh, sweet. They are hard to miss. For 13 points. 13. That one completely dies as you cut him in twain as they run screaming away from you. This one, The next one tries to attack. Aranvius fails as he returns the favor in kind. But instead of that time, he is going to... Yeah, he's going to still use the sword again. Uh, he will hit. You see his, his icy sword comes down. And he ends the life of that one as well. That comes upon him. Next up, two of the mains are going to go after... They're going to try to claw their way towards Zydeco. And Zydeco, you're, you're going to be sitting there shoulder to shoulder with your allies. You see these two clawing hands coming to swiping at you but cannot reach you as they try in vain to get you. Zydeco, it is your turn. Already? Yeah. Combat goes faster with them when you kill, start killing. You guys start killing more people. Less people to run yeah. through. Um, let's try a Ray of Frost. All right. Uh, the closest one is just out of melee, so you have, don't you have normal attack on that. Is that a crit? Yep, it is. Hell yeah. Are you going to go after one of the ones that were trying to reach you through the your allies? Yeah. Okay. And I'm not sure if it calculates... Well, it did already, so that would be six damage. Six points of frost damage. As you realize, McCoy didn't do as much as you think, but it still did a, it still did a large chunk. As it cowers from the cold. Anything else there, Zydeco? Ch-ch-ch. No real reason to move 
However, is there anyone who looks like they're having particular trouble or swarmed at the moment? Uh, Elzara seems to be a bit under the weather at this point. Uh, he's streaming blood quite prof uh, profusely at this point. Uh, and then Aranvius also has several mains on him, but he does not seem to be hurting at the moment. Um, I like to keep um, Elzaris in my sight. Okay. And that's going to be it for me. All right, sounds good. One of the mains are going to try to feebly slap at... Uh... Actually, that's the one that got thrown by... Oh, it's going to get up and it's going to jump on the closest person to it. And that would be... Actually, this one's just going to run right to Oong again. Right back to Oong. Because they are not smart. Does a 16 hit you, Oong? Matches. Grand total of 6 slashing damage here. Cool. Hey, Aaron, your turn. Alright. How we looking? There's still a, a bunch. There is 1, 2, 3... Five left. Most of them injured at this point. Mm. All right. Well, um, I guess I'm just gonna. Mm, yeah, I'm just gonna attack whichever one um, is closest to me. Okay. Because I, I don't know. I'm not gonna be picky. I will be a fourteen to hit. 14 will hit. Absolutely. A total of 9 damage. 9 points of damage. Alright, that is enough to kill another one. Anything else? Mm, no, that's it. Alright, Elzaris, it is your turn. Uh, I'm going to be very concerned with this thing biting my arm and I'm just going to pull out a dagger and try to stab it in the face. Okay. That's uh, a 19 to hit. Absolutely. We'll hit just a little bit. For two points of piercing damage. Luckily, all you needed was one as you just it's on your arm like gnashing and gnawing. You just take your dagger and you smash up your you brace it on your forearm and you just plant the blade deep in its face as it starts to melt into a black Icarus goo. Uh, okay. Then as a bonus action, I will drink my one healing potion, because I am quite hurt now. Okay, sounds good. Doran, it is your turn. Yay, full health. <laughs> I will cast Toll the Dead on one of the ones that is in melee combatant with somebody. You'll cast what? Uh, Toll the Dead on one of the ones that's in combat with somebody. Alright. There is one injured one on Oong. There is one injured one on uh, Aranvius. And then there's one healthy one that is also on Aranvius left. Okay, I'll... Uh... I'll target the injured one on around VS. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, that is a 17 on that one. Okay. And then... Uh... Okay. Is anybody else really injured health-wise? Can I, can I tell outside of uh, who just took a healing potion? Uh, Ung is looking pretty hurt, but Ung is fine. Do not worry about well, Ung. I'm, I'm a little bit, but... I see, I see that Ung's bleeding, and I'm going to reach over and cast Cure Wounds on him. Okay. Uh, that's two uh, actions. The cure Wounds. Oh, separate. yeah, I, sorry. I see it. Nope, that's fine. Um, 
I will, uh, I guess, uh, try to use my shield to uh, defend whoever's next to me okay. as far as my positioning deal. Okay. Good to me. Ung, it is your turn. Uh, Ung is going to... Um, for starters, uh, second wind. Okay. Um, five plus one, six. Healing back. Okay. Um, that's bonus action, and then action, he is going to, uh, stab another one because he is not happy with these things at all. Yeah, you have the one you threw across the room, uh, gnawing at you. Uh, I'm going to grunt at that one, and then, um, 16 to hit. 16 will hit, yeah. Or 10 slashing. 10 points of slashing, absolutely. That is overkill on that one, as it splits in two and puddles. Anything else there? Um, no. Ung, is, is there any other one? Uh, there are two left on Aramvius. One's next to me, or no? Nope. The only two left are on Aramvius. Okay. All right, cool. I'm going to walk over to him. All right. You get shoulder to shoulder with him, and he looks at you and nods as he will take a swing at this one next to him. Uh, he will hit. And he will kill one of them. As the one remains. That one is going to reach out and try to slash at him. And that is going to get a critical hit on him. As it reaches up, as it jumps up, and it gets a one colossal slash right across the side of his face, rending his flesh. Ear to mouth as he snarls in pain at it you see the bitter hatred in his eyes directed at this creature Zydeco it is your turn alrighty um I guess I'll go after the one that just attacked him mm -hmm. that's the only with... one left at this point yeah so Zedeko will move as far as he needs to in order to be able to cast Mind Sliver at 60 feet as the range. Yep, so uh, that one is a saving throw one, so you can cast that anywhere up to 60 feet. So it can be right in front of you or all the way up to 60 feet is the max range you could use it at. Okay, got it. Well, then he's still going to cast it, though. So the initiative uh, to hit, it's... Um, it's a saving Intelligence 13. Yep, uh, it fails it by 1 with a 12. So roll your damage. 4. Perfect. 4 points of damage as you see it grasp at its head from the sliver of psychic energy you darted at it. Uh, Aranvius nods at you, mouth torn open in a savage grin on the one side cheek, torn open. Uh, anything else there, Zedeko? No. All right, Aaron, your turn. Oh, sorry. I was totally muted. Um, and distracted. So, uh, one left. There's one left on Arambius. Uh It is injured, and it just got a critical strike upon him. Tearing open his face. Uh, ten to hit. Ten will hit. That'll be twelve damage. As you come up with your trident, as you pin it to the floor, as it puddles, as that is the last one. Aramvius looks at you guys. Jaw exposed from the slash, and nods. As you look at him, you see parts of it already starting to stitch itself back together. He looks at you and well now you see firsthand what we're fighting here. Is everyone well here? 
now. Um, I, I'm better now that I took a potion. Yeah, I probably should drink mine. But like, if somebody hey, could no, heal no, no, me, no, I can no, save no. the potion. No, 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 no. I walk over to you and I cast he, cure wounds on you. He stops before you do that. He's like, wait a minute, I have more potions before you spend your resources. Nope, this is the only good thing I can do. <laughs> Literally the only <laughs> spell I can cast right now. If you insist, it is up to you. As you I pull... walk over and I will use cure wounds. Okay. He'll pull out another bag uh, and each hand each one of you another healing potion. Yay! Also take uh, nine points of healing. Thank you. As I rolled max on that. I'll drink one of my healing, the, the healing potions. Okay. Yeah. Also, you heard that correct. I can cast one spell, and it is <laughs> cure wounds. I don't have great stats, guys. You know what, though? That's a good one. If you had to pick just one, that's a good one. Honestly, I was looking at my <laughs> spells that's like, you can prepare these spells. I'm like, that's probably the best spell to take, in all honesty, so I'll take it. <laughs> Zadiko is going to be um, staring at the injury, which is healing on its own, and just sort of, well, fluff up for a cat. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, and when this is when this is healing this way, can I do a medicine check to see to determine exactly why yeah. it is healing the way it is? Absolutely. Uh sixteen. Sixteen, alright. Uh you notice as you're looking at him, uh, and you're looking at it, he's like, it is fine, my friend. Uh, as he sort of waves you away, you notice on his finger is a ring that is coursing with green energy. It seems to be reinvigorating him. Oh, okay. Alright. Yeah, Zydeco immediately relaxes. <laughs> it seems to pulse uh, once every minute. Okay. Or not minute, every every couple minutes. He's like, I should be fine. My family has ensured that we have the best chance of surviving here. As it's very odd seeing his jaw stitch back together from the slash. He's like, damn good arm on that thing, though. That one smarted a bit. So, are you ready to continue on? The uh, passageway isn't much further to the dungeon. I know, <coughs> I know a secret way there. <coughs> Was he not? I'm, oh, go ahead. I'm gonna look at like the group or whatever, because you know, coming from the church or whatever, I'm gonna ask: Does anybody know exactly where these kind of things come from specifically? Because they're like, I, I'm assuming since they were talking in infernal, and I don't quite understand it, but I know what infernal language is or whatever. I'm just gonna kind of look and like. So they were speaking abyssal. Oh, okay, Abyssal. I thought you said Infernal earlier, sorry. I, I might have. I tend to goof with demons and devils all the yeah. time. Ung um, um just looks down and points. And then I look at you and say, Pudding? As there don't seem to be any more corpses left of these creatures. They seem to be all a black ichor across the room. But it seems to be dissolving whatever it touches for the most part, but then becoming inanimate once again. Well, if anyone else is interested in looking through the human slurry, I suggest we move on. So you guys move forward following Aranvius at a brisk pace. Uh, you notice as the minutes pass, he ends up healing up. And eventually, we get to a door. I have to ask, I know one of you are uh, 
cannot see colors. Does anyone else have that issue? As we have the very first dungeon of this campaign. Yay for dungeon delving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you get that at Jasper's a couple years ago? No, I've gotten this. Uh, I actually got this from Upkeep. Oh, okay. Which, I'm currently working on maybe getting a sponsorship right now, but that's if Amber can talk to the right people. I was just in there yesterday. And the day before. I drove past it the other day. <laughs> so. Battle Cam Supreme has the map. Uh, Shnady, I know you have a hard time seeing colors. Would a dye work for you for currently? Yeah, white would be great in there. Okay, I have a white uh, token. I can use that, or yep. a white dye if that'll work too for you. No, nope, a white token will work. Okay. There. All right, so the colors I have are blue, yellow, pink, orange, or green, and red. Uh, Zydeco, what color would you like? Yellow. Yellow. All right. Uh, next up, going up and down, uh, Laura, Aaron. Um, you do not have purple anymore, correct? I do have purple still. I did not see that one. You want, would you like purple? Yes, please. All right. Next up, Ang. Pink. Pink. Okay. Yes. Honestly, I'm not surprised. <laughs> All <laughs> right. Uh, last but not least, Elzaris. Uh, I'll take green. Why not? Green? Okay. Well, please don't put me that far ahead. I would not be up front. To Marshall, what marching order would you guys like? On the front. That's what I figured. On in the front. I am perfectly fine where I am. Yeah, I'm also, good with that too. Kind of second. Also, I'm gonna step away for a minute to go see if my dinner is ready because I am a little hungry. I'm fine. All right. Just grab a miniature for Aranvius. So, while we're waiting for uh, Azaris to get back, how are you guys enjoying it so far? Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's weird playing a cleric. I, I have a hard time playing clerics. I really do. I just... I adore clerics. <laughs> I've never played one ever in, like, the years upon years of gaming. Ever. Ever. So... I thought I love the versatility. <laughs> yeah, no, I was looking at it and I was so like, hey, there's some creative stuff you can do. It's just member and I was looking at spells or whatever and I was like, oh, hey, these are kind of neat. And then I was trying to fit them to the character and I was like, oh, okay. And then, then I thought afterwards, I might have done as poorly if this could turn out to be a long term thing, giving Kane, uh, Ken access to a grave cleric. I was like, no. I, I, I say nothing to this. 
I'm not going to accept or deny your claims. Uh, actually, why don't we do this while we're waiting for Josh to get back? Uh, why don't we take our 10 minute intermission here, guys? Uh, get up, grab a snack, grab a drink, stretch your legs, and then we will come back to this. Fresh. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. All right, I'm going to switch our screen to be right back and mute everything so you guys can talk freely while.
is back once more. Thank you. So, you guys <clears throat> make your way to this old double Big door. As Aronvius puts a key in and looks at you and nods as he opens the door. He walks in shoulder to shoulder, shoulder with Ong, Aaron right behind. And uh, the rest of you guys following. He's like, so. He points to the room immediately to the left. And he's like, that is the first location for one of our, our artifacts. We need to put them in the four corners of this place if we can. So. I'll follow your lead here. I want to see what you all are capable of. Ung goes in and kicks the door in. <laughs> so you come right up. You kick the door clean in. The old bad hinges just smash right off the wall. And in this room... You see lots of things in here. You see. Lots of zombies. Mm. And closes the door. You kicked it off the hinges. Mm. As this will be initiative as they start to come through. Mm. <coughs> um, um, not bright. But has he learned a lesson here today? We shall find out. I think we already know the answer to it. Azaris, what is your initiative? Uh, 18. 18. Doran. 10. All right, Ong. Uh, I got a 14. All right, Zydeco. 5. All right, Aaron. 15. 15. Zydeco, so far, your initiative is rolling like clockwork, if I should say so, based off your class. <laughs> Sorry, I, I couldn't help it. Uh, Elzaris, you were the first to respond. You hear the door crack open, and you hear, oh, as you hear the growling and snarling of the undead. Eldaris, what are you doing? Um, that's an excellent question because I'm not not the most useful character here. Um, I will peek around the corner and fire my light crossbow at one of them. Okay, you are the. Uh, Green. Five, ten, fifteen. Peek around the corner. That is a fifteen to hit. Fifteen will hit a zombie. Yay. For seven points of piercing damage as I duck back around the corner. All right, you do seven points of piercing damage to it as it does not seem to like that at all. Hence why I'm hiding behind the corner so they all go for for Ung. <laughs> Alright, so that one, the first one, seven points. As you see, you hit it as its arm just sort of sloughs off further down. As 
you back up five more feet. Anything else there, Elzaris? Um, no. All right, a Aaron, not Aaron. <sighs> <laughs> I'm gonna move forward a bit, and uh, you know what? I'm just gonna go for it and squeeze in there right next to. And you're the purple um, one. Yeah, I am purple. Twenty. Uh, as a bugbear, you do have ten feet of reach, so you can hit this one right there that uh, uh, Elzaris has shot. That is the one I shall hit then. All right. Uh, 13 to hit. 13 will hit a zombie. And just to confirm, my rage is no longer active because it was 10 rounds, right? Yep. And we had a little pause there. It only lasts a minute or if you don't hit something or to get hit. Right. Okay. Um, five damage. Five damage. All right. Let's see here. And then I shall bonus action rage. Okay. Because uh, I'm scared. <laughs> as you hit that one, it sort of staggers. And it'll stay up with one HP. I scowl at it. It backs at you. Ong, it is your turn. Uh, Ong <clears throat> sees all the zombies in front of him. And... Uh, realizing his mistake, uh, takes the dodge action. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else? Uh, takes one step forward. Dodge action. All right. <clears throat> Zombie is going to attempt to swipe at you. Uh, disadvantage. Uh, good thing you had a dis or used the dodge action because that saved you from a critical hit. That is a mm. five to hit you. Miss. Uh, next one, next zombie is going. This one is going to come up and he's going to attempt to hit you. Uh, that'll be an eight to hit you, which will miss. Miss. Doran, it is your turn. All right, I'm going to walk up to where I have some line of sight. 15, all right. Um, and I see that they are engaged. Um, I will use Toll the Dead on one of them. Okay. Uh, is this the one that is going to be injured or the one that is not? Yeah, one that's going to be injured. Okay. Wisdom saving throw. And has it been 10 minutes? Uh, it has, yes. Okay, I just needed to know that. Okay. Uh, that zombie passes with a 15, I believe. Okay, nothing happens. All right. Anything else? Um, no. All right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six zombies. Smash in. And not get that lucky. They are going to all try to mash up, and they're all going to like hit each other trying to smash into you. Let's see, with disadvantage, if well, at least one of them hits. And they will all miss you there. Zydeco. Um, I think I'll take my full movement as far as I really can go. 20 to 30 right here. Yeah. And I don't think I'm in range for any spells from the looks of it. Uh, so you are in... So you're 5, 10, 15, 20... About 25 to 30, 5 feet away. Uh, and you have direct okay. line of sight. That's so perfect. Just about any of your spells you should be good for. Yeah, okay. Then, well, zombies, probably stupid. <laughs> let's try another Mind Sliver just to see what happens. All right, yeah, let's see if I can get below zero. I get a four on one of them. 
Well, it's 13, so. Yeah. As that first zombie that attacked Ong passes away, it becomes dead dead instead of undead. Alrighty. As that one dies from the mind spike. Anything else? No. All right. Next up is the last cluster of zombies, and they are going to attempt to pile in further. But they just do not have the ability to smash into you guys, as these are not smart. They're all moving at the same time, and they are all wedging themselves in a mass. Elzaris, it is your turn. Okay, uh, hmm, I'm, uh, so I guess I will just shoot another crossbow bolt. Okay. Does a 14 hit? Absolutely. Wonderful. At this point, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. They're all stuck wedged nice. shoulder to shoulder with each other. Trying nice. To that's uh, nine points of piercing damage. Nine points. All right. That one is there. Um, I forgot to roll for him. So nine. All right, anything else there, Elzars? It uh, stays up, but it no. is hobbling a bit. All uh, right. No, I have nothing. Aaron, it's your turn. Well, speaking of fish in a barrel, I love fishing and stabbing fish with my trident. I'm going to just, like, lunge it forward and see if I can get two at a time. I don't know if that works. I just want to stab forward and see how many I can get. Yeah. Uh, mechanically, you're going to get about one. Uh, might pierce through them, but right. not, it's not going to do damage to anything but one, but you might pierce right. through the other ones. There's zombies. Oh, that's a nat 20. Yeah, absolutely. So, what, what with what you're trying to do, I'll give you this option. Because the dice backed it up. I will let you do the main damage of the crit, like the full double dice, on the first one, or if you want it to penetrate to the second one, each one will take one of the die. I would, yeah, I would like to split Cause you, it. Because you, you, you stated before your attack that that's what you were trying to do, and then the dice right. said yes. So, so when I rolled, well, I did roll as crit damage, and so it rolls the two dies separately so it was an eight and a four and then three okay. bonus which one would get the three bonus plus there would be two more bonus for rage uh i would say you could you get to choose the bonus does not okay. go to both but it, you can split it however you choose correct okay so let's do let's see 11 on the first one so the eight and the three will go to the first one and then the four and the extra two it would be six on the second one. All right. This seems proportionally accurate. Luckily, you manage to do really well, and you take two of them out with one, one swipe. Yeah, fish. Anything else? No, I'm just very impressed with myself. <laughs> Ong, your turn. Dodge. <laughs> You're doing the dodge action he sees again? He sees what's going on. He likes what's going on, so he's doing the dodge action again. <laughs> okay, Doran <laughs> looks over. Looks over at the affront and goes, huh. "I'll cast the uh, Told the Dead on one of the injured ones that is there." Uh, there is no more injured ones at this point. Uh, I thought. What's his name? A oh, Aaron got both of them. Okay. Uh, then that's fine. I'll just do one of the other ones that's trying to hurdle in on. Uh, yeah. That gets a one total with its negative modifier. It, 
one. points of damage. You said four points? Yep. All right, sounds good. Next up, uh, Aranvius finally gets off his butt and starts moving, as I forgot to add him into the initiative last time. And he is going to sit there and... <laughs> this sounds interesting. As he snaps his fingers as a pool of grease appears in their room. As almost all of the zombies start slipping and falling prone in the room. So the pool oh, well, ends... that's not helpful to me. The pool ends right in front of uh, the two fighters there in the front. So they are all prone at this point. Comes up to the zombies' turn. Let's see if they can stand up. Nope, that one's still on the prone. 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 Yeah, no, all the zombies stay uh, on the ground. Zydeco, it is your turn. All of the zombies are prone. Uh, if you use a ranged spell attack, one that's like a to hit bonus, that'll be a disadvantage. But if you use a saving throw like Mind Spike, it'll be a straight roll. Uh, yeah, yeah, might as well stick with what works. Mind Spike again. All right. With an intelligence saving throw with their negative four modifier, brings it down to a nine. And that is a four for damage. Four for damage. All right. Very good. Anything else? Um, sorry. Um, no. Okay. Sounds good to me. Next up are a bunch of other zombies. Let's see if they can... Nope. They are still also prone, and one literally breaks his leg off while trying to get up. Getting a natural one. As he will not be getting up. Uh, Elzaris, it is your turn as these zombies are fumbling to try getting to their feet. I can't shoot them when they're prone. Uh, Elzaris yells, can you light a fire? Or not Elzaris, uh, Aranvia says, light a fire if you can. I don't have an easy way to do that other than just lighting a torch. Which takes an action. Well, do what you will. Is it a free action to toss it in? <laughs> no, it's a free action to drop object. I'm going to drop it 20 feet to my left. <laughs> <laughs> so, Zaris, what are you doing, um, my friend? Do, do any of them look very hurt? Uh, yes. The first zombie. That on the one. Ground. That one, I will use Thorn Whip because Thorn Whip is a melee spell attack. Yep, so you have to get within 10 feet of them, right? Uh, no, 30 feet. 30 feet, all right. 30 feet, and I can pull it up to 10 feet closer. Yep, so you get there. And that is, because he's prone, that's a modified 20 to hit. Yep. And that'll be five points of piercing damage. All right. Basically just dragging him into my friend's feet. As you do that, you do that, and bits and bobs come at you flying your direction as that one dies. Anything else? Uh, no. Alright, Aaron. It is back up to you. Sorry, there was a kitten emergency. Nope, you're totally fine. Okay, um... Uh, so I missed if he, uh, did the torch thing. So what's... Uh, he did Is there anything on fire? Okay. Then I need just a moment because I think I have a torch. Uh, it takes an I action. do. It takes an action to light the torch. Right, but I'm right up in there. So can I take my action to light the torch and then just drop it and back up? Uh, you can, yeah. 
Uh, give me a survival check to see if you can light the torch in the first try, as tinderbox with fire is not the easiest thing to use under duress. That is a ten. Well, that is exactly what you needed for that. Uh, Thank God. It, your fingers, you scratch a couple times, but you light the torch, the, the sparks take, the torch lights up. And you just drop it into the grease. And then I say, hold my beer, and I back up as far as they can. All right. Roll me four die four here. Um, seven. All right. As the zombies start, they burst into flames, all of them. None of them seem to die, but they do seem very heavily injured by this. Okay, and then um, can you just back me up? Yep. I'm, so uh, I don't actually make fur one of them die. Fire. Yep, I will get to that in just a second. I'm just putting in all the health damage before I forget. That's, I'll allow it. <laughs> back up. As a furry person, I just was concerned for my own safety. Yep. Uh, Ang, the room just got real toasty. <clears throat> you are just at the borderline of the flames. <clears throat> um. He is holding my beer, though, so he has that. Ang, Ang would not hold your beer. Uh, Ang is non-alcoholic. Uh, Ung just stands there and continues the dodge action as he's holding the line. <laughs> okay, another dodge action. <laughs> yep, another dodge action. He is currently holding the line while everyone else is picking him off, and he is perfectly fine doing that. All right, Doran. Um, it's a whole different chestnuts roasting on a greasy fire type deal. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna use told the dead on one of them that's in the fire. Okay. Uh, that fails horrifically with a zero. It's not a critical fail, but it is. Eleven points of damage. As another one dies. <clears throat> Next up, Aranvius. Looks uh, at you guys, nods, and uh, he is going to, uh, yeah, he's just going to, uh, he's going to look to you, Zydeco, and nod as you see him uh, point to another uh, one of the zombies in the fire as he you see a very familiar spell come out of his lips as Mind Spike takes out one of the zombies. And then the flames take out another couple from the burn damage to start. And then Zydeco, it is your turn. There seems to be three more zombies left in the flames. Alrighty. Um, it's going to be another mine spike, but let's go for the light green one, the light green dice in the corner. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's a five. And that's a two for damage. All right, it stays up, but it is on fire. Currently on fire. Anything else there? Not currently. Okay. At the start of their turn, the fire roasts the remaining three zombies to death. As things calm down, Aranvius looks at you guys. Well, that was worked a lot better than the last encounter. What have we learned about doors? What have we learned about doors? 
He kicks them in and hopes for the best. I'm going to put the college. door back on the hinges. <laughs> it's rotting. Or it's rotten at this point. There's no reattaching it. Ung looks sad. Uh, it's funny because if it had gotten to my turn again, I was trying to think of this in a scientific way. That's a grease fire. The last thing you want to do is throw water on it. <laughs> I'm going to throw water on it. <laughs> Uh, Aramvius looks to uh, to you, Doran, and he pulls out uh, from a pouch a gleaming silver bell for the most part. And he hands it to you. He's like, please, if you would do the honors and once those flames die down, place this down and give a prayer to activate it. Okay. Doesn't matter what deity hears it, but yeah. it needs to be said. Okay. So, after a minute, the flames die down, and what do you do? I will, um, I'm going to look at it and be like, is there a, a specific place in this room that it needs to be done? Uh, central room, or... if you, if is best. Okay, I will, like... <laughs> take out my shield and like push some of the zombie goop and grease <laughs> off the floor okay. and try to clean myself a spot and I will get down and you'll see my uh, holy symbol out and I will say uh, to Kalevmore we have once again brought balance to life and death may you take these souls that were stuck here in an unearthly state back to where they belong and then I will ring the little bell and I will nod. Alright. He nods with a smile and at this point you realize his face is fully stitched back together at this point. Uh, he's like, thank you for that. And as you finish the words, you see a, a salt, you hear a soft, gentle ringing emanating from this artifact. Well, one down, two to go. I assume the next room uh, on this corner of the facility is probably going to be close. But the last two are probably going to be a fight to get to. So, lead the way, my friends. I pick up my torch. There's not much left to it. It's burned mostly to a crisp. Is it dark in here? Uh, it is dark. Uh, I'm going to find a tiny object. Easy enough. You can find like a loose piece of rock or the remnants of her torch or of his torch. Wonderful. I'm going to hold it and I'm going to imbue it with some magic and it is going to fi uh, radiate five feet of light. Okay. Sounds good. Can I stealth ahead to the corner and take a peek around? I have dark vision. Absolutely. Hey, Ken, as we come to the hallway, like to the edge of it, I want to use an action to use Eyes of the Grave. And any undead within 60 feet that isn't behind total cover protected. I can know the location of. Yep. Zedico, you come up. Give me a stealth check there, Zedico. An 11. Okay. Alright. Well enough. As nothing seems to be amiss here. You do see, looking down this hallway, you see what appears to be another doorway. Uh, or a hallway leading out. I will relay the information, but I will say a room and not a door. Very specifically, not a door. Okay. <laughs> so Zydeco comes back and tells you there's a door there. Or not a door, uh, the room there. A room. Room, not a door. Room. Sorry. 
And what do the rest of you do? I hand People my... didn't like what Ung did, so... Oh, go ahead. I, ha I hand my uh, little ball of light to Ung because I don't know if he has dark vision. Ung does not have dark vision. You now have five feet of light. <laughs> so you can Ung basically has... see the area immediately around you. Hmm. But, you know, better than being blind. Ung starts to go to the front of the group. You that see is a hallway my... going down this way, or a doorway leading to a room here. Ung points to the door. That is my one magical tinkering that I can do today. Because people didn't like what Ung did to other door, so he's pointing to this door. <laughs> so, Ung starts pointing to this door. I'm not going first. Zydeku at first is shaking his head and is immediately like loofed up, but then it's just looking around. It's just like nods at Ong, like "screw it, let's do it." Ong kicks on the door. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at this point, no one else is gonna go first, so we may as well just uh, let him kick in the door. So Ong just wanted permission, so he didn't get yelled at. <laughs> you as you see what appears to be a perfectly empty and clean room. I'm just not like the sun backs out. <laughs> um, Too pristine. Zydeco will take a look um, just at the entrance, try to peek around a corner and take just see what is there. It, uh... Yeah, it, it seems to be a spotlessly clean stone room. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a speck of dust or debris anywhere in this room. Clearly great evil has happened here. <laughs> the maid came through this room and this room alone. And it smells faintly of lemons. Mm. I really doesn't like this room. <laughs> Ung points to tough guy and points to room. <laughs> uh, Ranvius is like, this is probably one of the rooms that we should probably put one another one of these uh, artifacts in. And he holds. I don't one like out. how clean. I don't like how clean it is. It's weird. Everywhere else has been dirty. Why is this place clean? It doesn't make sense. That is a very good question. Uh, do you investigate it for traps or anything? I'm gonna look up at the ceiling to see if it's moving. Alright, so you look up at the ceiling. Roll me a intelligent saving throw. That's concerning. Uh, that's a nine. So you look up in this build or in this room, and you see a rune on the on the ceiling, and it pulses once, and you just come right into the middle of the room and you just sit down. Question. Yes. Quick question, because I am a a half elf. Is this against charm? It is. Yes. Then I have advantage. Okay. That's much better. That's an 18. Yeah, so you you feel it at first. You're like, whoa. But you go in and you sit down. You look up at this room. And you're like, wait, what, what am I doing? Why am I sitting here? And you break out of the charm effect. I just back out of the room very quickly. I'm like, that's not fun. Don't look at the ceiling. That's not fun. You've got this urge to clean when you were in there. And then you broke Ugh. the charm. Uh, uh, I don't like it. Ung, does Ung see Alexaris uh, do this? Uh, 
you do, everyone sees him go in, just look up at the ceiling, walk in, sit down, and then go like, ugh, and then like run back out. Oh, look at the ceiling, it's weird. Hey, when Ong walks by me and I see that that light source is really dim because I'm struggling to see, I'm going to reach out and touch his armor, and I'm going to cast light on his armor. It's, it's suddenly very bright in here. It just had to show me up. <laughs> Ung looks very, very confused at his armor. Look, I understand I'm just a beginner at all this magical tinkering, but I'll get there, all right? I'll get there. I'll, I'll look at you and be like, hey, it's no offense, I needed to be able to see too, and what's better than a giant walking beacon? And I will look over at Ong and I will give him a thumbs up. <laughs> he, he does that thing where he doesn't quite... He just does that, like, slow motion thumbs up like he's just confused at the entire situation. <laughs> oh, so the thing that I do all the time. And Ung, Ung is not magic. Ung does not know what to do in this room. Ung leaves this to the rest. He goes and, he goes and sits down in the corner. I think it's fine if someone wants to put the thingy in there, but just don't look at the ceiling. Because you'll get the urge to start cleaning. So, the uh, Aranvius hands the or pulls out the artifact. Does anyone else wish to do that this time? Or is it Doran again for this? Um, Zydeco raises two fingers, okay. willing to do it. After you, my friend, as he hands you this, uh, this bell. Alrighty, he will tuck his hat on a little more securely, <laughs> and head on in. Okay. So you get in the middle of the room, you set it down, and what do you say to activate it? He told last time any prayer would work to a deity. That one is a lot tougher for Zydeco, but quietly, as if trying not to let the others hear him, just goes, I realize that I am not someone who is prone to this, but at this time here is hoping that those of order and of kindness will hear me. Okay. You hear a soft hum from the artifact as you step away from it, and it has been activated. Mealy dashes out the room. <laughs> All right. You next, you see. Will this actually fit perfectly? It can. After she walks, and she kind of like hustles by. I'm gonna reach out and tap her on the shoulder, and like give her a nod, holding my uh, amulet, and then give her guidance. The uh, side ago is a guy. I know. Well, yeah. Well, you being a person, or yeah. Yep. But I can't really tell because you're probed up. So like, all right. You being you as you walk by. So you have this long hallway in front of you. Coming forward. Who is leading it? Is it the same uh, Ang and? Mm-hmm. Aaron? A -A 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 -Ron? Mm -hmm. All right, so you start coming it's down the so hall. It's so funny every time. You start coming down the hall, and you see there is a door uh, in the wall right here. There's a doorway right there. Ung stops and points at door. There's a door there, it seems. Zara's just shrugs. Hmm. 
and then just and point gives, that door again. Just gives <laughs> Ung like that slow thumbs up. Ung kicks on the door. <laughs> uh, Ung, as you go to kick in the door, your foot sticks to the door. As this will be initiative once more. As the door sprouts teeth. I had a feeling it was going to be a mimic. You know me too well. Elzaris, initiative. I got a 10. Doran. Six. Six? Yep. Alright, on. Uh, 19. Yeah, 19. 19. Zydeco, I think I seen in the game log you had a 20 this time? Yes, finally. Perfect, perfect. Aaron. Not Aaron. 19. 19, alright. Oh, Father, this is not her actual character. <laughs> What's that? What? Did thank the All Father that it's not her actual character. <laughs> yeah. Z Zydeco, you are the first to respond. You see. I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> uh, you see uh, Ung's foot. He's in a very awkward position. He's standing on one foot. His other foot is like stuck to the midpoint of the door. As the te or the door is starting to sprout teeth and a long purple tongue, saliva drooling off the door as it hungers for its next meal. What do you do, Zydeco? I will say, well, that's the end of that, and walk away. No, I'm joking. I am joking. <laughs> <laughs> I will cast Ray of Frost. Ray of Frost, all right. Uh, roll the hit. 17. 17 will hit this mimic. And unfortunately, with one point of damage. One point is still more than it was, more than nothing. So you you point the ray of frost as you just see a tinkle of frost energy come up as a, you see a little bit starts to frost over on it. Not as much as you'd like, but it still hits it. Anything else, there, Zedico? No. All right, Aaron, you see Ung's foot stuck to the door. You're right next to him. What do you do? Hmm. Um, um, you want me to chop your foot off? <laughs> I hope you get unstuck. I got trident. I just, like, peel it off for you. You want me to do that? He points to the door. He's oh. just like... Okay, mm. I, sh I shoot it with my crossbow. All right. I just thought I'd offer. Yep, so you're not within melee of it, so yeah, you don't have disadvantage on this as you're technically 10 feet away from it. 12 to hit. 12 will just hit. That is AC of the Mimic. 6 damage. 6 points of damage. Alright, as you thunk in the bolt, it quivers in it. Almost, you see it pulse like it, almost if you slapped a thing of jello a bit. Uh, as the eyes appear on it many faceted eyes appear and they swivel right to you. Anything else there, Aaron? I snarl at it. All right. And it... Ung, what are you doing? Ung looks very, very confused and then very, very angry. <laughs> <laughs> Although you can't see his face for his old visored helm, you can tell by his arm that he's just flexing and he's not happy. Um... Over 20 to hit? Yep. Two, four. Uh, ten. Ten points of slashing. Ten points of slashing. All right. Uh, as you swing your great, uh, your exactly. great sword into it, your great sword sticks and gets stuck. As both now <laughs> your foot and your great sword are stuck to the store. Hmm. Uh. So you are in a very awkward position. Your sword is stuck. Your foot is stuck. Anything else there, Ong? 
Um, Ung might not be smart, but Ung has an idea. My sword and foot are stuck, correct? Yes. Ung falls prone. <laughs> Does not work as well as you'd like. Mm. Uh, you ha do you drop the sword, or do you, or do you still hold on to your sword? Oh, like I'm trying to pull it all the way down. Yep, it holds me. fast. As you are literally just stuck in the air, bent at a wrong angle, holding onto your sword. <clears throat> Ung is not happy. Ung moves on. <laughs> Next up, you are going to get a bite attack from the door they're on. As your foot is stuck to it, you see teeth appear around your ankle. And that'll be a 23 to hit. Mm -hmm. For 11 points of piercing damage. And 4 points of acid. Mm. So 15 a combo points. together? Yeah. Okay. Are they separate damages, or is it just one? It's it's uh, 11 points and then 4 points so, of acid. Because I had 10 points total of health left. It's under the same attack. Okay. So it would only count for 1 for like death save wise. You're not going to take any okay. death saves. Ung is down. Uh, as you see Ung's foot come clean off at the ankle as it bit his ankle. He falls to the ground bleeding. Did you just remove my foot? Elzaris, it is your turn. Dick. Well, that's concerning. Uh, I'm going to rush over and use my other spell slot to cast Cure Wounds on Ung to make him not be dying. Okay. For a measly two points of health. It's better than what he had. So Ung... I mean, true. Well, I won't band -aid. <laughs> Ung, he stops the bleeding on your foot as you wake up, as you're, you look down and you're missing your, uh, your foot from the ankle down. What is it with you and removing my limbs? <laughs> I, I mean, this adventure literally had a warning label that that might happen. Lovely. So is ours. Anything else? Um, nope. Also, these are one-shot characters, so don't worry too much about it. Doran. I I see that, like, is he, like, no longer... Like, I'm trying to assess his, his physical situation. Mm -hmm. He's still unconscious. No, he's awake now, uh, but he's missing a foot. All right, I'm going to go try to grab a hold of his shoulder and drag him away from the door. You're not going to be able to do that. <laughs> I'm letting you know that right now. How heavy are you with your armor? With my armor, I'm pushing around a thousand pounds. Wow, how heavy are you base heavy? Uh, around 400. Or 500. 500-ish. What type of armor are you wearing? Chain. So 75, so... No, I guess it would be that. I guess it'd be... I'm 500 pounds total, so 500... Almost 600 pounds, yeah. Okay. Uh, so this would be an athletics check here. Okay. Uh, uh, an eight. An eight? So, he's going, yeah, he's going nowhere. Yep, you, you grab him by the shoulder, you get, like, your arms and you just... Uh, as you feel something pop in your back. I, I'm a beefy boy. Anything else there, Doran? <laughs> um, I can use my bonus action, I guess, to cast Toll the Dead when I realize I can't even move him. Yeah. All right, so wisdom save. And that is a 14. Okay, doesn't do anything. All right. Arambius will... Uh see this, he's close to the uh, the door and 
he is going to uh, da, 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 da. he is going to swing at the door and cast wrathful smite he will hit Seventeen points of damage as it needs to make a wisdom save. It passes the wisdom save, so it is not frightened by him. But he does hit it really well. His sword gets stuck in it. And he looks at you guys and he snarls, Finish it! Zydeco, it is your turn. Alright, um, Quick question, DM. Yes. When it comes to restore balance, um, how do I tell you that I want to use it or indicate that? Uh, restore balance is a class feature, right? correct? Yeah, but it's also one that's sort of more instantaneous. Yeah. But the thing is, is I, I can't really see when people are rolling. It's a little trickier on that front. Mm -hmm. uh, what it restore balance? Uh, restore balance when a creature yep. you see within sixty feet. Uh, for that, because we're doing uh, online, if even if before I roll, you can just say, "Hey, make sure that's not with advantage or disadvantage." Uh, you can just interrupt me and double check. Okay, got uh, it. Just because we're not sitting around a table, all individuals. So right. I'll give that one a bit more leeway than rules is written, just because that way it's actually usable in theater of the mind and online. Yeah, thank you. Yep, not a problem. Alrighty. And let's do a mind sliver to see if we can get some disadvantage on that mimic. Alright, that gets a 7. So it fails. And that is two damage. All right, so that's a d4 subtracting from the next saving throw. Anything else there, Zedeko? No. All right, Aaron, your turn. I guess I shoot it again. <laughs> I can't do anything to help. My buddy on on their ground there, but uh, twelve to hit. Twelve will just hit. That is AC. Okay, seven damage. Seven damage with the crossbow. So you rack another bolt, and then you let it fly, slumps into the door. The door howls in pain, uh, but it is still alive. Anything else there, Aaron? I howl in response. But, like, happily. Okay. Ung, um, your turn. Ung is going to grab his one of his potions of healing and use his action to drink it. Alright. Ten points of healing. Mm-hmm. Any, any bonus action or anything you want to do? Oh, uh, can I stand up-ish? You can prop your, You can stand up, like, using the wall. Yep, I'm going to stand up. While my claymore is still attached to the door. Yep. You can use that to pull yourself up. Can I see my foot? You do not see your foot, unfortunately. <clears throat> Next up is the Mimic. It snarls as it makes... Uh, it's going to attempt to hit a Ronvius. The pseudopod. And that's all 
of the enemies hate Arambia, so that's another critical hit. <laughs> <laughs> that is okay. It's not one of you guys, so I will gladly have that on the NPC who can heal. You noticed I didn't say anything to that one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, that'll be eight points of critical damage. As you see, he just gets socked yet again right in the face by the pseudopod that comes out of the wall. He just... What are uh, with the enemies just hating his face? Because that's the only part of his body that's like, actively exposed because he's wearing full plate. Fair enough. As he just gets... he Like, his head snaps back to the side. Ugh, he, he's like, ugh, that hurt. As, uh, doesn't do, like, the damage like the last one, but he, bl blood is streaming out of his nostril. Elzaris, your turn. Um. Huh. Hmm. This is problematic. I'm going to shoot it with a crossbow. All right. And Original. miss horribly. I can't hit the broad side of a barn door with a five. Was that a natural one? Nope, that was a natural two. Okay, just checking. Anything else there, Elzaris? Um, seeing as how I failed that bad, I'm just going to, like, put it away and then just start, <laughs> like thinking to myself on how on what I need and how to create um, an artificial foot okay Doran it is your turn muted Chinetti Doran, muted. Uh, sorry. I'm going to look at your dump and I'm going to like sincerely apologize and be like, maybe we can help you with this. And then I'm going to cast Toll the Dead on this thing on the door and be like, I, I don't know what I can do, but maybe we can come up with something. All right, that'll be uh, a 13 on that. So, Okay. Doesn't do anything. Okay. Sorry about that. No, I'm more concerned about his foot and trying to contemplate uh, like a medicine check when mm. I can get him in the door to look at it. Arambius, uh, let's see here. He is going to uh, look at his sword that's stuck into it and he is just going to take the his arm holding the handle on the one, his other arm, he's going to come down with his shield and just smash down on the blade to try to push it down into the Mimic further to make an attack at disadvantage against it. And his sword is not going to budge as it ringing clangs out as item hits item. Nothing happens. Zydeco, your turn. All right. Um, given this situation as it is, and things are not looking too good, and we're down a foot, he's going to cast um, Chromatic Orb, because why not? All right. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, that's a seven to hit. Uh, as you go to splash, you, you whip out your orb, it zooms through and cascades across, un un ineffectually across the walls. Um, that's going to be it, but there is a lot of cussing going on right now. <laughs> A-Rod. <laughs> It is your turn. Fucking hate that name. Fucking hate it. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm so sorry. This is why you don't mess with doors. <laughs> why do you I not like know. my name? 
Okay, the, Gee, the door. I wonder why. Okay, but listen, I missed you so much that I named my character in an intentional way of trolling you. So mm -hmm. that's it came from a good place. Okay. <laughs> so what are you doing, A Rod? I'm gonna shoot it again. Okay. Seventeen to hit. That'll hit. Nine damage. Nine damage as you uh, clunk it into it. It howls out in pain, acid dribbling down its mouth. Uh, one of the many that are appearing on the doors. The noise is not pleasant. Anything else there? It is still alive, but it is not looking long for this world. Mm. No, I don't think there's anything else I can do. All right, Ong, your turn. Ong is going to look at this thing, and in a grumble, uh, he is uh, going to... Bonus action, cast jump, and headbutt this fucking door. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> wait, wait. Where do you get jump from? Is it his Imagine magical item? Yeah, I have the ring of jumping. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm over here with the brooch of shielding. <laughs> All right, give me, uh, let's see. Give me, a, I'll say this is an advantage because you're using the spell to headbutt this. This is probably going to do damage to yourself. Uh, an attack roll or athletics? Yep. This will be uh, an attack roll. You're actively okay, fighting his weapon forehead. Yep, you you hit it. Twenty. Yep. Mm -hmm. You smash your head right into that. Roll a uh, die six here, plus add your strength mod. Eight. You will do eight damage to yourself, but you kill the mimic <laughs> by headbutting it. As the mimic sloughs down, as you realize it was just a, a flat stone wall there that it had created a divot in for itself to imitate the door. <laughs> as you fall prone again, as you're missing a foot. Uh, Ung takes his potion and drinks it again. <laughs> his second potion. <laughs> okay. As initiative is over there. Uh, very is, tearfully. Is Go ahead. Go ahead. Ken, is, is there enough material around here for me to make him an artificial foot? Uh, depends on how you're trying to go about it. Uh, basically just extending the stump the slightest bit to make it so he can walk. Mm -hmm. well, what items do you have for in your... Uh, your packs uh, that might help with this as right now this is a pretty sparse dungeon at this point I will offer up my javelin to piece uh, together a peg leg for him I mean I can work with that you can. I have tinker's tools and wood carver's tools alright give me a uh, tinker check here Ung sets down is a, this a dexterity based or Intelligent yeah. based. Uh, this will be probably dexterity based. Dexterity based. Uh, I'm going to reach out since he's doing that. I'm going to give him guidance. All right. So you say a prayer over him as he's going to do this. As you get a That's a D4. Yep. Yes. Okay. That's a 19 total. 19 total. You're able to fashion a javelin peg leg for him. Uh, yes, this does cons this does constitute a javelin attack if you kick with it. Right. Uh, my uh, kick does piercing. <laughs> my, my, my kick does piercing. I love it. Uh, your speed is reduced by five in total, but you can stay functionally up without falling every turn. Did anyone even just check to see if the foot is still there? Ung doesn't care. Ung is happy. Um, Ung has just, spear foot. Uh, you, I'm I'm gonna look. Yeah. You, so you you take like uh, 
a, like a dagger or something, you poke through the puddle of goo that the mimic was, and you find the skeletal remains of his foot and the bit of armor that was his shoe left. But the acid worked very quickly in breaking it down. Is his, is his claymore around? Yeah, his claymore is still there. Okay. Oh, Do you, you want, want your foot back? Um, uh, Zydeco like points at you or points to your foot and he's like she, they're like do you want this back? Um, sorry I was looking up something um, Ung grabs the foot grabs his claymore and starts tinking away <laughs> step tink step yeah, tink so step, uh, tink. your speed is reduced by 5 and you'll have uh, disadvantage on stealth checks because of the tinking that's perfectly fine so, who knew being an artificer could be so fun? <laughs> uh, Ung does, Ung does go over to Zydeco, pat on shoulder, take off big toe off foot, and hand it to him. <laughs> this brings Zydeco great joy, as he was actually feeling a little bad because he kind of wanted the foot. <laughs> <laughs> Both of you take inspiration for that exchange. That's <laughs> thank you. Well oh, worth well beautiful. worth the uh, entertainment there. Oh, but how is he gonna kick doors down now? I have two feet. Well, you have a foot. <laughs> you have a foot, and the other foot you can't really balance on. Says who? You know what? You're more than willing to try. I guess. So, Ung becomes deadly top. <laughs> As Ung either takes unarmed fighter for the rest of the game or or becomes a monk in his future life just so he can kick things better. Uh so you Ung come is up, no monk. you come upon a door to your right and the hall or the hallway continues straight and you see another door uh straight ahead. Uh, um, throw dagger at down. door. A da dagger <laughs> flunk and jiggles on the door a bit, but does not trigger another mimic. I'll go get that dagger. Alright. Clunk. Pull it out. Kick the door. Uh, give me a strength <laughs> check there, uh, Elzaris. As you try to kick the door. This is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt real bad. Did you get a nat That's a nat one. one. Did I break my ankle? Uh, Did I just break my own ankle? Yeah, uh, well, you don't break your ankle. You're like, you've seen Ung do this several times. You're like, I can do this. And you go to kick it, but you don't do the flat, of, the heel of your foot to kick it. You get straight up toes. Oh. Mm, I break you, my toes. Yeah, you feel at least three of your toes just oh. crack and break from this as you'll take four points of bludgeoning damage. <laughs> as bone breaks don't necessarily have a damage type. Unhand his just, toes. I it's believe the, the correct term is shame damage. Uh, as your movement speed now will be reduced by ten due to... That's fine. I still, um, I'm still now at the same walking speed as Ung. Ung, Ung looks at him. Here's the bones crack and removes another toe and hands it to him. <laughs> I will, I will take it and say, I mean, I can use it for something, but I don't think it's gonna fix my toes. He nods, and then charges at the door and shoulders so it open. Okay. <laughs> Uh, give me an athletics check here. Yeah, that that was the uh, best thing about uh, me taking half Wood Elf is I took extra movement, so now I'm at just the same movement yo. as. On... Um, that's not very good. That's an eight. Uh, you just sort of bounce off of it and fall on your ass in the hallway. Jesus Christ, we're being defeated by a door. 
Ung is not liking this door. Ung gets up, gets the ten feet back, and charges at the door and jumps into the door using bonus action jump. <laughs> <laughs> Can Zydeco like dash and open the door before this happens? Uh, because you're Tabaxi uh, and the feline agility, uh, yes. All right, then I'll use my feline agility just to do this. So you go, you slide, you realize the door's unlocked, and you just sort of push on the door as you uh, as you turn the knob and slide underneath, as here comes uh, Ong <laughs> barreling over you within a hair's breath. Your whiskers, like, feel the rustling of this Goliath cascading <laughs> past you. You slide... Have. You slide under as... The door opens. I now have the best idea. I need to put a point on Ung's helmet. As Ung, you find... You make your way, like, really far into the room. Uh, this room? You're looking around? And, uh... You see... Absolutely nothing. As Ung makes sure not to look up. <laughs> as you are enveloped in darkness. And your even your armor lit up does not light up this darkness. Mm. You okay in there? Mm. And Ung starts well, he's alive. And back towards the door. <laughs> so Ung, as you do this, and I'm gonna drink my healing potion real fast, so I'm not hurt. Uh, hey Ung. Mm-hmm. Hi. Hmm. Uh, something attacks you in the darkness there, bud. <clears throat> As you get, uh, something bites you on your neck. Or tries to. <clears throat> so here, that is a 21 to hit. Uh -huh. You'll take three points of piercing damage. <clears throat> and 14 points of poison. And Ung is down. <laughs> so you hear Ung crash in there, go, uh, grunt, and then he comes, starts walk, hopping back, you hear clink, clink, and you hear thud as he falls <laughs> prone, as this is initiative once more. Elzaris. Uh, 17. Doran? 13. Ong? Uh, Ong got a 10. Alright, Zydeco? 10. And Aaron? Not Aaron. 16. 16. Alright. Azaris, you are the first to respond. Uh, I respond with confusion. Yeah, all you see is a room full of impenetrable darkness, and you hear a thunk. As something heavy has fallen to the ground. Uh, um, I don't even know. Um... I forgot I took that. I have an idea, but I need Ung to consent to it first. Ung, Ung, Ung cannot deny need, consent because Ung is dead. Ung's, <laughs> I need Ung's player to consent to it because my oh. idea is to thorn whip you to pull you out of the room. But Do whatever that would you want. Be hurting you. Is fine. Hey, I'm Ung going is to. 
I'm Wait, no! You, crap, yeah, okay, do say, it. Do it, I have rock, an idea. You have stone's endurance, remember? Yeah, I know, I just remembered that. Just remembered that. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to use thorn whip. Alright, roll to see if you hit... This will be a disadvantage as it is dark. No, I get a natural one. You miss horribly. You actually shut the door. I closed the door. <laughs> Anything else there, Alzars? I'm gonna just reach forward and turn the knob on the door again <laughs> to get it open in shame. All right. Next up is Aaron. Um, let's see. I want to see how. Wait, how far in the room is he? Uh, he is fifteen feet, but you do not know how far he is. Is that room is impenetrable? Oh, darkness. right. Okay. Um. So, here's what I want to do. So I have this fishing net, and I would like to go fishing for Ung. <laughs> And try to just reach around and feel for his head in there and then just pull him out. All right, give me a attack roll at disadvantage. Oh, that's not bad. Disadvantage, 19. Does that hit you, uh, On? Yes. All right. AC 16. You, uh, you land him. Uh, now give me a strength check or athletics to pull him out. You might be the only on. one of the only people here that can do this. Seventeen. Yeah. So you your muscles bulge as you pull. As you slide. You see. Uh, you see. Uh, Ung's feet what? coming out of the doorway. As you got him by the legs instead of the head. Well, it's I'm not picky. Uh, hey, look, I found him. Uh, this is the catch of the day. I'm going to cast Spare the Dying. Okay, sounds good. He's, I see him and he's within 30 feet. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Anything else? Um, I'm going to look really confused at the pitch black room. And knowing that, like... The light source comes back out of the room, right? Uh, the light source peters back up when you see his legs coming out. Okay. But the room is still absolute darkness. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look over at the tabaxi, and I'm gonna like. I'm like. I'm like point at the light, point at the dark, and go like, uh, I got nothing. All right, Zydeco. Or not Zydeco, uh, Ung first, then Zydeco. Actually, you guys all are on the same initiative here. Ung is unconscious and can't do anything. Yep, so Zydeco. Can I feed Ung a potion? You can. Uh, let's do that. Are you using this as your action or your bonus action? Action will give him 10 points. Bonus action, you'll roll for it. It's um, full action. Okay. So you gain 10 points back. Ung. Um, and as you wake up, on um, you uh, you wake up to a sight mm. as you're starting to be pulled out a little bit out of the the uh, the room here. As Can I ask what happened as he wakes up? Uh, you see this sitting on your chest, looking right uh right about looks like to kiss you. Can I grab it? Uh, you can. It, it, as it lets out a shriek, as it also is going on the same initiative as you guys. Because it also okay. has its head. Can so I grab it? You grab it. Uh, everyone give me a wisdom saving throw as it shrieks out as he grabs it. Is this against a charm effect? Uh, no. I got an eight. 
Nat 20. 40. All right, and then uh, Doran, what was your save? 17. All right, 17. So, uh, the only one who got not great is Elzaris. Uh, with an 8, you will uh, become frightened by the Vargyle as you see this thing pulled out of the darkness. Uh, while you are frightened like this, you are stunned. Everyone else is immune to this shriek for the next hour. Yeah. So, Ung, what are you doing? Uh, Ung is not liking what he's holding. Um, can Ung stand up while holding onto it? With one foot, it, it's a bit difficult, but uh, you manage. Ung's going to hold it above his head and jump. <laughs> <laughs> Get it to the ceiling. All right, give me an athletics check here, or an attack roll here. At 20. <laughs> roll me two dice six. And add your strength. 12. 12, all right. It's still alive, but barely. Anything else? Um, no. Ung's gonna hold it out in front of him for everyone else to whack. Alright, anything else, uh, Zydeco? You still have bonus action left, if I remember correctly? Yeah, I don't have good bonus actions. Okay. As Aranvius looks at this thing, oh god, that thing's ghastly! As he is going to... He's just going to uh, take a swing at it in your hand. He'll hit as it pops like a balloon as it had one HP left. As the Vargyle has fallen. As the room sort of, you see the light or the darkness sort of peter out as the room lights once more. You're real lucky that Zydeco uh, healed you right before it kissed you there. Uh. <laughs> like, really lucky there. But the room is open now, as you see a mostly stone-walled room with a few patches here of wood uh, holding up broken down pieces of brick and mortar. You see frost on the walls, and this room is very dusty. As you see several headless corpses uh, sort of slumped up in various parts of the room. Ranvius looks and he's like, this is probably another good spot for one of the artifacts. Who wants to do the honors this time? As he pulls out another bell. All right, all right, I'll go talk to some gods. Okay. What do you say? So you take it in the middle of the room? Uh, I will say... Not, I know I'm not always on your guys' best side, but I would appreciate if you guys would help us in this scenario and stop these demons and devils from invading this city. Please. And as you do that, a slight hump, as your prayers have been heard. <clears throat> Thank you. So, you guys make your way. Make way. All right. Well, I should say, what do you do now? I don't want to arbitrarily tell you what you guys are doing. Well, we have the other room ahead of us. Yep. There's it looks it. like. Or is that door straight ahead? Yes. Dagger at the door. <laughs> Funk. Nothing happens. 
It takes one mimic. Are you surprised? <laughs> Not at all. I love I, I do that with most of my characters. Just as a character flaw. It took one room full of zombies for Ung to now point at every door before tackling it. I know. Character mm -hmm. development, it's great. Ung pinks his way over to the door and points at it. <laughs> uh, on this door, you see the symbol of a moon, a symbol of a sun, and a symbol of a star. Ung points at the star. I, I'm just going to grab my dagger before anything else happens to the store. Say, let's pull the dagger out first. You pull the dagger out. This door seems to be made of wood. Uh, like the last door. The other doors here have been made of stone. As you're starting to see more and more wood here and there. As you're getting to more like of an earthen location. You guys are by the door. I'm gonna take some, a little bit of time to wrap my toes together so that they can heal well. Okay. Is he trying to do that? Hey, Ken, is he's trying to do that? I'm gonna hop over and do a medicine check and try to help, like, reset them and do something fancy to get them so yeah. they're not. Oh, that's gonna hurt. You gotta re break them in order to set them again. Give me a medicine check there. 22. Uh, as you guys are sitting there uh, looking at this door, all of a sudden you guys just hear a crack and the scream of uh, Elzaris as his toes are reset and wrapped properly. <laughs> Medicine in action. Can I take a look at the symbols on the door? Um, See if there's anything magical about them. Yeah. Give me an arcana check here. I'll give her oh, guidance yeah. when she goes to do that. If this is after I've bandaged his foot. Okay. I'm going to be I'm in too just... much pain to do anything of help. I'm just still just pointing at the door. <laughs> 17. 17. Uh, the door does not radiate any magic, nor does the symbols. Mm, disappointing. You do get the faint buzz of magic from behind the door, however. Like there might be magic behind the door, which is less useful. Okay, because that still means we'll have to open the door. So, I'm going to do something really random because I, like saw the darkness created and my character assumes maybe that weird little creature that uh, what's his name tried to smash on the ceiling Yeah, I'm going to grab that I'm going to go back and pick that up unless he's still carrying it I don't know if he's got it as a trophy he didn't really specifically say he um, doesn't keep trophies okay well I'm going to go pick that up off the floor and stick it on the door and then on my other with my other hand I'm going to cast light on the door Okay, uh, the door lights up, but uh, you do not, the, the head just sort of slurps off. Okay, and then I'm going to like wipe my hand on part of my cloak and be like, well, I, I was thinking maybe, you know, because we saw darkness and saw light or whatever and looking at this door, maybe it had something to do with it. As the thing slumps off, hung, uh, uh, not hung, hung is pointing at it as it's falling. <laughs> The door is still standing there. Ung tries opening the door. The door opens easily. And Zedeko so, applauds. Uh, <laughs> character development. Uh, Ung starts applauding. <laughs> what's that? Ung starts what? Ung, Ung starts applauding because he doesn't know why we're clapping. <laughs> so immediately from the inside of the door, the, met source, uh, the, sun, uh, the source of magic is revealed. Uh, you see three base, or you see one basin, and a shelf with three objects on, the, on the shelf. Uh, this first basin radiates cold energy. You see on the shelf there is a sun, 
a moon and a star in stone. Each one its own individual effigy there. And the basin that radiates cold. Ung is not magic type. Ung gestures for magic type to mess with it. Um. Ranvius just sort of puts his hand on his chin and starts thinking. I'm going to ask if somebody, like, has an, uh, an understanding of nature in the group. Because I would think the sun would create warmth and the moon, you know, hides the warmth or the light and the, the stars... I wasn't the the best uh, wood elf out there, I will admit. That's kind of why I got kicked out. Well, I'm going to be like, if you probably know more about it than I do, and I'm going to give you guidance and say, take a look at it. Uh, <laughs> sure. Why not? Let's make a... Let's make a freaking nature check to see if, it, if I do any... Hmm... You get an extra D4. Woohoo. Yeah, that still only brings it up to an 8. You think the moon's in the sky? Or is there two moons here? Hard to remember. You should go outside yeah, and look. I'm... Yeah, I, I have no clue. Could you repeat the description, please? Yeah, so there is a stone basin that radiates cold. And on an adjacent shelf, there's three stone effigies. One of a sun, one of a moon, and one of a star. Well, I think it's the sun. So I'm going to um, <laughs> mention that, not just do it. Um, I think that it's the sun, you guys, because I'm pretty sure that back in that place, they said that they were um, something about frozen suns. I don't know. Okay. Makes sense to me and my eight. <laughs> Check. So, so you mentioned this. What what else do what do you do? Do you take a stone effigy? Do you what do you do? What is how are you trying to go about this? Mm, I think that we should put the sun effigy on the stone pedestal with the cold that thingy. Do that? Does anybody stop me from doing that? I don't. No. Oh, no. I know. Um, okay. I need to move the map back further because my headphones are not allowing me to get close enough. <laughs> oh, oh. So? You place the effigy in the stone basin, the effigy, effigy of the sun. And you hear a click as the next door opens. Wow, you guys, I am so smart. I did not know if that was going to work. Mm. I'm not surprised about the door being there. Nung points to the door. As you look in this door, you see another basin. This one has an orb of darkness in it. As you see yet again, an effigy of a sun, a moon, and a star. Um, yeah, there's wrong name up front. <laughs> <laughs> As Aaron gets brought up to the front again. Oh. Uh. Hmm. I don't know. The only thing I can think of with the darkness would be the their family name is Darkheart, but there isn't anything about... I don't know. I'm not sure which effigy would go with that. 
or if that even has anything to do with it. I'm just going to roll to see what I would think. Yeah, I'm just going to, I would say this. M the moon is out mm -hmm. in darkness. We should do the moon. You know what? This dude wears a lot of silver and um, werewolves hate silver. <laughs> and so let's do the moon. <laughs> it all makes perfect sense. Yeah, you put... Uh, yeah. You moon put, makes so much... You put the moon in the darkness. And you hear it the next clear click. You come around the corner and you get halfway through the room and you see there's another... There's two tables here. There's another basin. This one has a flame in it. And the, on the table there's three more effigies once more. A sun, moon, and a star. And Probably you see a door are. with two locks. One open and the other lock still sealed. Ahead. Probably the star, right, you guys? What do you think? It's the only one we haven't used. I mean, mm -hmm. that's... Process of elimination. And put the star on the pedestal. Yep, put the star in the uh, basin. <clears throat> and the door opens. We did it! Ung starts clapping. <laughs> Zydeco mostly wonders why this place was built. <laughs> <laughs> As the door opens, however, this absolute smell of death and decay hits you. Oh, um, wash your stump, please. As you see, all of the dice are uh, corpses laying upon the ground. Are they lying very still on the ground? Yes, everything is lying very incredibly still. As still as death, one would say. Ong takes a step into the room. Hey, as Ong does that, I'm going to use my Divine Sense to detect uh, undead. <laughs> uh, does it just detect undead, or does it detect anything else? Undead, Celestial, and Fiend. I think I think mine is just oh yeah because your grave domain eyes of the grave yeah um, mm -hmm. you don't sense any un undead actually but you do see out of the brief brief perception give me a perception check here while you're doing this ah uh, sixteen. to see uh, you noticed from the corpse over here you see what almost appears to be a silvery strand very briefly underneath it or um, through like a torn part of the body a silver what? like a silvery strand okay so sort I'm, of... gonna, I'm gonna let the group know as soon as what I saw and be like one of the bodies had some sort of silver strand or something run through it or under it. And as you say that, the corpse abruptly stands up straight. And its head completely spins around in a circle, completely snapping at the neck. Its head comes back around like an owl. It, waves, or it waddles and waddles and goes... <laughs> I'm gonna kill you now. 
as everyone needs to do a wisdom save from a frightened effect. Mm. <laughs> God damn it. I suck. <laughs> I rolled <laughs> such bad stats for this character. I got a two. <laughs> I got a four. Eighteen. All right. Anyone below a twelve? Mm. Uh, ba -ba. You are frightened for a minute mm. of this thing. Uh, anyone uh, that succeeded the saving throw is immune to this uh, ability for 24 hours, as this will be initiative. Elzaris, what is your initiative? 16. Doran? 13. Ong? Nine. Zydeco. Nine. Seventeen. Aaron. Four. He got that. Manually entry. Let's see. Here. The lowest initiative you've ever seen me roll, I think. Yeah, honestly. All right, Zydeco, you were the first to respond to this thing. Uh, you see its head twirling full around on it. Um, given that it's... Uh, Zydeco is... He's pretty sure that this thing is evil, so he is going to cast um, protection from evil and good on Ong and just says you better make use of this. This is it for me. <laughs> Alright. So uh, Ong, you get protection from good and evil. Anything else or is that a go? Um, that's going to be it for now. Alright, Elzaris, you are frightened. You cannot <clears throat> you cannot approach Ugh. I'll just, I guess I'll just take a half-hearted shot at it with a All right, crossbow. Be disadvantage. Can I change that? You absolutely can with your tides of, or your uh, not tides of chaos. Uh, restoring order. I will, so will re-roll that as a straight roll yeah, then. Roll it as a straight roll. Good call. Oh, that's not good at all. That's a five. Unfortunately, that'll miss. However, uh. That uses My your disadvantage roll that. was still better. Zydeco. Hey, My disadvantage a was a four on die. My straight roll was a two. Elzaris, anything else? No. All right. It is the creature's turn. It uh, cackles uncontrollable. Oh, uh, Elzaris, you can make a, a save at the end of your turn. Fifteen. Right. Yeah, you uh, <clears throat> passed the save. Yay! Uh, it's gonna go. <laughs> oh, eeny meeny miny mo. Who <laughs> looks like you want to go? As it's going to ask. Uh, let's see here. Ong, make an intelligent saving throw. Uh, you have advantage on this one because of the uh, protection from good and evil. If I know the spell right, right? 16. 16? Yeah, that'll pass. As you've started to see phantasmal whispers appearing throughout your... Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> as it looks, it's like, oh, oopsie, that didn't work. <laughs> Doran, it's your turn. How close is this thing uh, to me? From you, you are white, 5, 10, it is 15 feet away exactly. Okay. 
I am going to move to it and I'm going to cast Inflict Wounds. Okay, sounds good. A 21 to hit. 21 will absolutely hit this thing. For 19 damage. 19, all right. As you hit this thing with it, you hear this this cackling, crackling laugh. <laughs> as you are just throttling this thing, as you are shriveling its husk uh, through the necrotic damage. <clears throat> and it is cackling all the while. Anything else there, Doran? Is this like cackling in common, or is it some weird babble it's, deal? It's like laughing. Okay. Like it's like a okay. very dis- deeply disturbing laugh. Okay. Next up, Ang. Mm. Ang is too far away to do anything. Uh, you are so the I'm purple gonna... one. You are fifteen feet away I'm from pink it. Pink one. Oh, you're the pink, pink one. one. Five, ten, fifteen. Yeah, you can still. Give you go. Ung is Five, afraid. Ten, Ung, Ung is frightened. Oh, you are frightened, yes. Yes. Ung rolled nine or something like that. Ung rolled really, really bad. Um, no, Ung you have advantage. Right. Yes. Uh, Ung is going to dodge action and then hold. Okay, at the end of your turn, you do get a saving throw at advantage because of the uh, protection from good and evil. Uh, Fifteen. That passes as you shrug off the fear. I'm just going to grunt very loudly at him. It is your turn, Aaron. I'm going to move in. um, Since I have that 10-foot range, I'll just move up. If that's a 5-foot square, just move up one square uh, within range of him. And I'm going to attack with my trident. Sounds good. Oh, that's not good. That's a nat 1, so 6. You end up throwing your trident across the room as you go to stab at it as it clatters into the far corner of the hall or the room. Shit. Anything else there? Um. Where would it have landed? Like all the way behind him in that like one of right the back here. corner? Okay. I will. Um, I'm going to take some more movement then. And go around 10, the... Yeah, around that way. 20, I know that I can't... 30 put you there. Okay. Well, will that... Thing, well, no, they wouldn't have an op attack. No, if it's you, just corpse on the ground. Yeah. Well, okay. maybe. So you get to it, you can pick up your, your trident again. Okay. Well, then that's it. Alright, Aramvius, his turn comes up. And uh, <clears throat> you hear him uh, let out a prayer to Agma as he casts divine favor upon himself and starts heading into the room. 15, 20, 25, 30. So that was a bonus action. As he swings his sword at him. That'll hit. Nine. Plus an additional die for radiant. So 11 points. So you see him come up, and he smashes his sword into this thing. You hear, oh, ah! <laughs> as he, the void, the cackling gets caught uh, dead as the body falls limp to the ground. And you see, slithering out of it, there's a jellyfish-like creature out of the corpse. 
Zydeco, it's your turn. All right. Um, so it appears to be dead, or is there now a jellyfish thing in the room? So it has it has fallen, and uh, and the corpse has fallen, and now it seems like there's a jellyfish like sliding out of out of the uh, corpse. That's what that D four is. All right. Um. Oh, fuck jellyfish. Oh. Can I? get in the range of the jellyfish and uh, try a... Are you trying to do melee or a ranged attack? It's going to be a ranged magical attack. It's magical sliver. Sorry, magic sliver. Yep, you can get like right there. Mind yeah. sliver, yep. blah, blah, blah. Perfect. All right. It's probably way smarter, but it's 13 intelligence. 13 intelligence, let's see. That gets a 14, unfortunately. All right. And can I ask one other question? Absolutely. Um, are we giving up our magical item when we do these spells that um, with the prayer? Uh, so, no. The pr uh, those magical items are for these characters. Uh, these prayers, those are these uh, artifacts. Are you talking about the artifacts that you're placing? Yes. Yeah, those are uh, staying in those locations. Okay, perfect. Then I have something useful later, but not now. Done. Sounds good. Elzaris. I'm going to shoot the jellyfish. You shoot the jellyfish. Do it, please. I hate jellyfish. Huh? Well, strictly because you hate them, I got a modified 20. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, as you find out that I, I I have a phobia of jellyfish. That's a complete fair phobia to have. That's a total of two damage. Two damage. All right. That hits it as you hear you hear a warbling cackle coming from uh, the creature. If anyone understands abyssal, you hear the mad ranting in abyssal. Anything else, Lazarus? No. <laughs> All right, it's gonna sit here. It's gonna stand up, or not stand up, but sort of slither out. It is going to attempt to hit uh, Aaron with a ten, uh, a tendril. That'll be an eighteen to hit you. Yep, I hit. Uh, you'll take thirteen points of necrotic damage. Oh Jesus. And your H your maximum HP is reduced by five. Um. Okay. So then I'm down. So yeah, you drop down. <clears throat> it is then going to jump into the body of this corpse here as it reanimates that corpse. Next up is Doran. Okay. When Aaron drops, is he at zero? Uh, they are. Uh, what is Kay. your current health point maximum there, Aaron, with a negative five? With a negative five, my maximum is only nine. Okay, good. Just making sure that didn't drop you to zero yet. Yeah, it, it would have been at one, but then it dropped my max. max down so that would drop me to zero correct yes okay so what are you doing Doran? they dropped uh it's a special i'm gonna restore the maximum possible hit point to a character that is at zero hp okay so uh you that's when you it's use the healing spell or healing oh, item. So you no, I got it. I, I got it. Yep. I was gonna use the. I was just gonna make sure that I could use it at some point because it's something a little unfamiliar to me. Yep. Um, I'll use the uh, spare the dying on Aaron. Okay. So Aaron is 
not dying. They are stable at this point. Yeah. Any, anything else there? That was a bonus action for you. Um, no, I will, I will pull my shield out and try to move closer to her or him. Sorry, okay. Aaron. So you're between Aaron and the new corpse. Yeah. This is driving me insane. Uh, you still have your action. Do you want to attack it or anything? Uh, no, I want to actually use the dodge as my action to okay. provide a cover. This sounds good. Ang, your turn. You are no longer frightened of it. Ang. Sorry, I muted myself. Can Ung make it to the bad man? Right. 10, 15, 20. 25 puts you right to him. Cool. Ung's gonna swing at him with his Playmore. Go for it. Nat 20. Nat 20, hell yeah. Jesus. <sighs> These dice like me. These dice like me a lot. Wow! 22 points. Holy crap. Hell yeah. As you slash you... Oh, man, that tickle! Ow! Ow, stop that! I'm gonna what kill you all! Was that Loki? No, no. Tickle me, was... Helmo. <laughs> tickle me, Helmo! <laughs> 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 if you didn't already have inspiration, I'd give it to you oh. again. <laughs> that was great. Uh, what just happened? Uh, he slashed him, and he said that tickled. I thought that was something happening to you. No, no, that was My him. God. <laughs> that was this demented uh, body snatcher. It was just out of nowhere, so I thought that was happening to you. <laughs> Anything else there, Ung? Nope. Ung is very distraught and does not like this entire situation. All right. Aaron, you are stable on the ground. Uh, no death saves required, but that is your turn, unfortunately. Yep. Aranvius comes up. He is going to uh, move over, and he is going to cast, uh, or not cast, use lay on hands and restore five points to you. There, a Aaron. Okay. Next up, Zydeco. Um, Zydeco is going to use and yeah. I'm going to use the Pearl of Power to restore a spell slot and I'm going to move next to the corpse on the right Near the wall. This one? Yeah. All right. Yeah. And that's it. All right. Elzaris. Um, I'm just going to continue to try shooting at him. It's the best I can do right now. Okay. 11. 11 will unfortunately miss. As... It sort of dances around the vault, its legs sort of dangling loosely, its arm pretty much off at this point uh, from the claymore hit as it just sort of smiles, its disturbing smile. Flip it off. Like a dangling puppet missing its I flip strings. It off. As you see a white tendril erupt from the corpse, from what looked like the jellyfish, as this pushes itself into Ong's chest. That'll be a 24 mm. to hit you, Ung. It's. You will take 10 points of necrotic damage. Down. And your HP maximum is reduced by 4. Do you want a stone's endurance this? Yes. The class feature that every, every Goliath forgets about. Correct. 
So you can roll a die 12 and reduce the damage by that. But your HP Six. maximum is still reduced by four. Ah. So you'll take four points of damage and then four an additional four points of HP reduction. Uh, how much is it plus? Is it plus one? Oh, boo. I have still, seven, so I still go down. You still drop, okay. With one point. As it just sort of cackles. Attack, <laughs> you're it. <laughs> Didn't you have inspiration? Oh, yeah. Inspiration, we rolled up. <laughs> the other thing that is always forgotten. That'll still hit with a 19. Ooh, okay. <clears throat> Doran, it is your turn. Well, I now see... Ong drop, correct? Yeah. I'll use my bonus action to cast... Spare the Dying. Okay. And then I'll use my regular action to toll the dead on this thing that body hopping or whatever it's doing. Alright. Uh, that fails with a 5. And it ha has technically technically been injured. Uh, 10 points of damage. As you do that, you hear, oh, the bells hurt! They hurt! Oh my god. As it drew the body collapses to the ground once more as the jellyfish returns. Anything else there, Doran? Um, what kind of knowledge would it be to understand what this is? I would say an arcana or religion check. Okay, I'm going to use a religion check when I see this thing start body hopping to determine maybe what it is we're dealing with. Um, I got a nine. Yeah, you... Not sure. Yep, not sure. Next up, Ong. Death well, you're stable. A Aaron, you're up with five. Yeah, what I miss? Uh, I'm gonna stand up. All right, you see the jellyfish on the ground, ten feet to your away from you. Oh, the jellyfish, eh? Um, you know what? I'm gonna use my net on the jellyfish, and just try to capture it. Okay. Uh, disadvantage on in. the attack. Oh, okay. Because nets, just... nets are weird because they always have disadvantage. They, no. Oh. It is a weird weapon. Okay. My kitten disagrees, but I'll just re-roll because I already rolled it. Okay, well, I went from a nat 20 to a 3, so 7. Unfortunately, that'll miss. Um, Where does it... I do not see where it says that it's so, disadvantage forever, so because, could you... Because it's a, a ranged attack that is only able to be cast within five feet. And because you're within five feet for a ranged attack, it's always at disadvantage because you're threatened by the person that you're in melee with. Okay. That's I thought dumb. because it was also martial that it, that it was a melee thing. Nope, nope. It is a ranged weapon. Actually, the exception would be for the bugbear because you have long arms. You're not technically within five right. feet. For, yeah, so yeah, you keep that net 20. Yeah. A every other thing but a bugbear, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, then if it's hit, it is restrained until we let it free. For the most part, yeah. Um, so, fucking kidding. Oh, I'm so sorry. My potty mouth. Oh, you're fine. Anything else? Um, just restraining it. Yeah, no, that's it. All right. Uh, Aronvius is going to... Wait, be... I changed my mind. Bonus action healing potion for myself. Okay. Uh, 
uh, Aramvius is going to take his turn, and he is going to pull out one of the relics, the last relic, and he's going to set it onto the floor, and he's going to say a prayer. And you hear him close his eye, or you see him close, close his eyes, mutter under his breath. Lord of darkness, Lord of lies, Lord of deceit, Lord of flies, grant me power to do what I must. As you hear the humming. Zydeco, it is your turn. Zydeco is ears flattened at hearing that, just not particularly thinking that this is a great thing. But hey, we're in the middle of a fight for our lives. <laughs> so um, let's go for... This is very risky. Let's go for a monochromatic orb. Okay, he's restrained. You do have advantage on this. In the net. Yes, if you don't roll a nat one twice. Oh. Meaning that mm. it's plus five and it's a six. A sucky, sucky six. Don't you have inspiration? Oh, yes. That makes me feel good, but yes, I'll try that too. <laughs> By the way, you don't have to use D&D Beyond's dice if you don't want to. I trust you guys until proven otherwise. So if, like, D&D Beyond sometimes has the um, suckiest No, it, it, it doesn't matter. I This is one of my powers, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> that did not... Uh, that just boosted it up to a... Um, inspiration lets you re-roll yeah, it. Nine. Yeah, inspiration oh, wait, you great. You re-roll another D20 and take the highest. All right, then let's try that. Yep. Were you using a uh, class? Yay! Yeah, that'll absolutely That's hit. so much better. 22. Yep, that'll hit. Okay. And that's 18 damage. 18 points. Looks like it's acid. As you hit it with the acid, you hear the abyssal warbling, like screaming in pain, but laughing and cackling like a mad thing. Again, uh, tentacles flailing as if a mad seizure. Anything else, Zydeco? Um, Zydeco is going to stay in place, yeah. All right. Elzaris. Oh, God. Oh, I do not like what is happening. I do not like what is happening, and I'm really having a hard time in character. Because <laughs> honestly, my character is scared out of their mind, and they know that they're not helpful. <laughs> so they really don't know what to do. Give me a wisdom save. Uh, yeah... Oh, uh, well, 15. Yeah, you are able to muster enough courage to do something. Okay. You are not immo uh, immobilized by fear this turn. Uh, I'll, I'll just go with what's already happening and shoot the jellyfish. Okay. You have advantage because it is restrained. Oh, even still, that's a 10. 10 will miss, unfortunately. I'm not the greatest, guys. I'm beginning to get very scared and really getting into that flight part of fight or flight. As all of a sudden it disappears out of the the bag or the net. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> and reappears behind behind Elzaris. This is horrifying. 
and you're just going to, almost like a demented Hanar from Mass Effect, uh, you're just going to have uh, a noodly appendage just sort of uh, try to mess mess you up. That'll be a 16 to hit you, L. Yeah. You will take 13 points of necrotic damage. I'm down. And your HP maximum is reduced by 4. Yay. As you drop. Doran. Okay. The guy that was got down and said a prayer when he was working with this little bell thing. Yes. Can I use a check to determine exactly what that prayer was for? Yeah. You can really can check. Uh, 19. It was absolutely to activate these artifacts. I, I'm like more determining what his prayer was to. Oh, because cool. we are prayer and that whole like I knew what mine was specifically for Yep. and his concerned me and so like you definitely got very sinister vibes coming from him like you, you don't you can't place the deity okay or if even if it is a deity but it's definitely being of immense power um I'm gonna use my bonus action to I'm assuming Azaris went just went down too. Yep. I'm gonna use bonus action spare the dying, and then when I see him on the ground, I'm gonna run at him with my shield, and I'm gonna say a prayer to Clevmore and just like lunge at him and just like use my shield as kind of after watching Ong, even though I'm <laughs> only like 150 pounds, yep. and like use it as the front end of a hammer and just launch myself at him. Give me a athletics check here. Uh, 15. All right, let's see here. Uh, you do knock him over. You, you barrel him right to the ground. And, uh, that's, that's the end of my, uh, action. All right. Ah. Um. You are still unconscious. Hey, Aaron, your turn. Oh, God. Okay. Um. Demon jellyfish is killing. Yeah, Azaris. that's no good. So, um. Doran is pinning Ranvius to the uh, to the floor. After saying that prayer. Going to use my crossbow at the jellyfish. Okay. Oh, ten to hit. Ten will miss, unfortunately. Okay. Um. Oh gosh, we've got two people down still. Uh, Aaron's down, and uh, he but he's stable. You and, mean you mean Ong? <laughs> yeah, Ong, and then Aaron is, or not Aaron, uh, Elzaris is down and bleeding out. Anything else? I'm trying to decide if I should bonus action use my last potion on one of them. Yeah, I need... Sorry. Um, do you guys want to, like, thumb wrestle for it? Because I feel like I should use it on um, Ong since he's... I useful. am a useless character. <laughs> But I feel bad because you're bleeding out. Okay, I'm going to use it on... I um, am stable, though. So I was spared the dying. Yeah, yes. Oh, yeah, both of you are well, spared okay. the dying. I thought yep. that yep. you were stable and you were not. Yep. Okay. I forgot and, about that, so... Okay, so bonus action using my last potion on Ung. Um. Yep. So Ung, um, uh, 2d4 plus 2 that uh, she will roll. 2d4 is 6, so you get 8 points back. As on your eyes flutter open. Ranvius uh, looks at you, uh, Doran, with a, a Doran with a smile on his face. I'll give you this one time. 
and he, his voice booms out to all of you. You have been useful. You have proven your utility. And he pushes himself up to his feet, despite your best objections there, Doran. As he cracks his neck and rolls his shoulders as he holds a black piece of dark amber. The time has come for my, me and my family to rise up and to throw aside the Council of the Frozen Sons. They have no place in this new future. The demonic hordes have proven this and proven their ineptness. As he puts the piece of amber sharpened to a point directly to your chest, Doran. I give you this one chance. Join me in building this new empire where the dark hearts will reign as monarchs in this land. And all of you will be secured a position of power. Or die here in this dungeon. That is your call. And I'll feed you the de de to the Dubuque. Zydeco, it is your turn. Uh, Zydeco... There is a part of him that is fascinated by this, but at the same time, there is a deep down, like, aesthetic ache in his heart as what is clockwork and incapable of allowing such chaos just pushes. And it's just like, nope, good luck to you if you try this. <laughs> so force between a wall and a hard place um oh and you still have the jellyfish the dubuque actively yeah attacking. yeah so he is going to take a look he's going to go for the dubuque again the dibic okay Dibic, that's how you say it. The Y's always throw me off. <laughs> eh. I, w I watch way too much mythology and other things like that. <laughs> so, it's an intelligent check of 13. Yeah, uh, let's see here. And can I that have that be a disadvantage? Yeah, absolutely. Turns it to a natural one, so you get critical damage on this. So you get to roll the dice damage dice again. Okay. As I roll saving throws, nat ones are crit. Okay, good to know. And that was a seven. Seven points. All right, as it screams out in the abyssal language, it's still up, but it is barely holding on to itself. And if possible, Justice Flavor, um, Zydeco is looking dead at our turn party member is as he does this is just okay. nope I'm looking at Aronvia saying this Elzaris you are still down but stable the Dubuque is er, the Dibic is going to uh, it's going to It's going to bow and submit to Aranvius. And as it does, nothing happens because it doesn't recharge. And at uh, Doran, your turn. As he spoke this to me, I look at him, and I said, I was here 
to help understand and restore the balance. And this is not balance. And I was taught to not fear death. And I turn and look at whatever that little puddle of goo is and cast uh, Toll the Dead on it. Okay. And I will say a prayer to Clevmore as I do this. All right. It gets a 16 on its wisdom save for that. And and I will just look back at him as this stuff happens, and okay. he should be able to understand my prayer. So, ah, um, you are unconscious. Still. Oh no, you're up. You got your potion. Ung is up. Ung is thoroughly confused as to what's yeah, going on. You missed the entire evil monologue. Yes. <laughs> so, Ung is trying to figure out why everyone is against the guy who sent us down here <laughs> and why everyone is kind of looking at him really like weirdly and Ung doesn't really know what to do Ung is gonna kind of just well almost everyone is giving him weird looks <laughs> meanwhile I'm still unconscious yeah Ung is gonna go over to uh, the Electorus and so five, like ten, 15 that's as much as movement as you got because you were prone oh that's right crap action dash All right. grab one of his potions of healing and Serve it down uh, his throat. You think I have a potion of healing on me? So you bend down, you That's fumble for at, uh, in his supplies, and find that there is no potion. <clears throat> <laughs> and then I look up and see the jellyfish and go, huh. <laughs> Yes. As that was your action and bonus action. Mm hmm. Hey, Aaron. It is your turn. Um, okay. You have heard his his decree. What do you do? You rem oh, he, okay. I was trying to remember which guy he is. He's the actual mini, correct? Yes, Aronvius. He, he declared uh, join or die. Okay, well, I'm going to um, stab him with my trident. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. Fuck, fuck, that's, fuck. A, that's a fair response. Is that a natural one? Yeah. So as you go to do it, he takes his sword as he slashes your trident clean in half. As you go to stab him, as he looks at you, shakes his head, tisk tisk tisk. I expect better of you. In the future will definitely have time to teach you some manners. Any bonus action there, hey, Aaron? Um. I bonus action flip him off. Okay. And while making direct eye contact with you, he scans the room one last time. Looks you, Doran, right in the face. You, my friend, will be the catalyst for this all. May Kellumvor bless you for what you're about to do as he embeds the amber shard in your chest, Doran. Everything goes black. You hear a ri colossal ringing as the ground begins to shake beneath your feet. <clears throat> the stones vibrate and shake as you see mists creeping up through the, the crevices in the rock, under every doorway, under every crack and cranny available as you hear a booming voice as the explosion rocks the world you hear a ranvius darkheart your crimes are heinous and dark for this we have such a place for you. 
You have doomed you and your realm to a future of bleak agony. But for you, you will never know. Stuck in there, your prison, your home. Make it as you will. You will not like it in time. You will always hunger and never know love. As things start to lighten up, mist has taken the entire continent, or not continent, country of Sassel, into the Shadowfell, into Ravenloft. As a new Dark Lord is born, a Ranvius Dark Heart, in the demiplane of Sassel, this is where we end the night. My homework for all of you is to send me a description of these characters. Uh, a, just a very brief uh, description. And then what I'm most, in, uh, most intrigued by are your ideals, bonds, and flaws. That is what I want to know. For the, and, your, uh, and your personality traits for the characters. As for this character or for the... For these characters, yes. These characters, okay. As events will unfold and they may or may not make an appearance further on in the game. Ung is reckless. <laughs> so, I hope you guys enjoyed this, the very first episode of Sossel and Ravenloft. Uh, I hope it lived up to your expectations and thank you for helping me develop the history of this world and what happened here next week we will start with brand new characters same uh same uh what do you call it uh character creation stuff minus the magical item you start with just your starting equipment and or gold your choice we still starting at level one? Still starting at level one, yes. So, is there any questions, comments, or concerns? Um, could you repeat the things that you wanted the most out of the description? The traits, yeah. flaws, and deals, and what else? So your personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws. So pretty much just your, uh, like, your characteristics. Like... D&D &D Beyond, just the description tab of D&D of D &D Beyond. Got it. Uh, so I'm ex super excited to see all of your new characters next week and to dive into this new demiplane that has been born from the actions here today. The next week's uh, episode will take... a take place a couple hundred years after this fact or this event so for everyone watching at home this has been odyssey of eternity thank you so much for watching and have a good night <laughs>